we're live. We're live. It's Hal and Sal. We're currently having the kickoff show. I thought it'd start about five minutes early. We went to start at, at quarter two. It's actually quarter to eleven over here in the UK. The clock's gone back, which is incredibly confusing for everyone over here in the UK. What is good though is that usually like a WWE pay per view would start at midnight over here. But when the clocks go back and the clocks change, this means for like a couple of weeks we get to watch it an hour early. So hopefully, we go to sleep a little bit earlier tonight too. That would be that would be lovely. But I thought I could go a little bit um, a little bit early tonight because we're just uh, we're on the kickoff show right now, and the twenty four seven championship is on the line. We have our truth defending the twenty four seven championship against Drew Gulak. What a shame! <laughs> what a shame! For Drew Gulak, he is so much better than that. I mean, a couple of months ago, he's on SmackDown. He's the the head coach for for Daniel Bryan. He's having great matches against AJ Styles, getting involved in that, involved with Daniel Bryan. I remember Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber earlier this year, yeah, Drew Gulak versus um, Daniel Bryan in Gulak's hometown. Was at Philadelphia? Unbelievable match. Unbelievable match. And he signs a new contract. His contract actually lapsed. For like a brief period of time, his contract lapsed and he looked like he'd left WWE and everyone was uh, saying, oh, I can't believe Drew Gulak's left WWE, it's a disgrace. They should have signed him. They did sign him to a new deal and what have they done? Now that he signed a new deal, he's on Raw going after the 24-7 championship. So that's good, isn't it? Um, a couple of other things that I wanted to make a note of that we've noticed on the, uh, on the kickoff show already. I don't know if anyone out there is actually watching the kickoff show. But Elias, he's obviously got his match with Jeff Hardy tonight at Hal in the Cell. Elias came up uh, as the, the panel there at chat. And so on the panel, you've got Charlie Caruso, you've got Jeff Jarrett, you've got Booker T, and you've got Jerry the King Lawler, and you've got Peter Rosenberg. And Elias comes out and he's talking, you know, doing his song about uh, Jeff Hardy, about Jeff Hardy tonight. And he sings this song... <laughs> to Jeff Jarrett as well and says Jeff Harley and Jeff Jarrett it looks like Jeff is Spanish for junkie and obviously both men Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Harley have had their issues with alcohol and substances and things of that nature and I will tell you Jeff Jarrett did not look happy I mean legit he looked very very angry of that and even afterwards they came back I think they went to like a little commercial they come back and uh, Jeff Jarrett was still not happy. <laughs> he was really not happy with that junkie comment. And uh, to be honest, why would she be happy with that? I mean, you've you've got this, you've been battling with these with these issues and these demons for however many years. You've had to go to rehab, and in Jeff Jarrett's case, he lost his job at Impact because of that. And I'm sure of all the personal things and strains that that put on it. And then you've got a comment by some jabron like Elias. Uh, making making light of that. I don't know. It didn't look like he knew that that was coming. He didn't look happy. He didn't look happy. And I'm sure people will say, well, storyline, storyline. I saw, <laughs> this is how crazy it is. I saw someone put a comment on social media. They went, well, he's obviously just, uh, Elias is just getting his own back from the Royal Rumble. Remember when Jeff Jarrett came out of the Royal Rumble? I look at that, I go, are you crazy? Are you, you do not realise it's a work. I mean, I wish, I wish. I was, you know, that far back. You know when you're a kid and you're watching wrestling and you believe it's all real and how great that is? You know, you really... I remember, I think the first WrestleMania I watched was WrestleMania 18. I w did watch the one the previous year, but that was way after the fact. But the first one I watched, like, the build-up to it and the first one I watched was WrestleMania 18. And I remember I was such a big fan of the Hardys. And I was actually devastated that they lost their fatal four-way tag team match at the time because I really believed at the time, I believed it was real. So I was devastated that they lost. And I was seeing that comment on Twitter and I was like, oh, it took me back. It took me back and I believed when I believed and I wasn't so cynical to this pro wrestling malarkey. But we've got our truth now doing John Cena's five-knuckle shuffle, shuffle onto Drew Gulak. I wish we would actually see more matches for the 24-7 championship. Because, I don't know about you, I'm, t I'm tired. I am so tired of this 24-7 championship. I'm tired of the comedy segments that 95% of the time aren't funny. I know some people will say that they like them. I don't. That's just, that's just me. 
Uh, I, but I, put, I I don't mind it when they're doing these, you know, these actual matches for it. Given that they brought back the twenty four seven championship, I'd rather them just bring back the hardcore championship instead, and actually have you know hardcore matches again. They never would though, because it's PG era. Hitting each other with weapons every five seconds isn't exactly PG, I guess. Uh, we've got a couple in the chat right now. Brian says three Hell in a Cell matches. Remember last year, I expected DQ. Well, what Brian is referencing there, of course, is that the last two main events at the Hell in Cell pay per views have ended in no contests or disqualification. Of course, 2018, it was Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. And then instead, uh, we had Brock Lesnar come out. That ended in a no contest at the time. How on earth can a Hell in a Cell match end in a no contest? But it can. And then last year, of course, we had the, the Fiend versus Seth Rollins main event, whereby. Um, the match got stopped by the referee for being too violent. Somewhere Mick Foley is turning over in his grave and he's not even dead after diving off of Hell in the Cell a million times. You think the ref ever called that one off? No. But because Seth Rollins hit the Fiend with a steel chair, it was over. So, Ian Thompson says, do you think we'll get an NXT takeover tonight? No. No, I don't think so. I know obviously you're thinking about Survivor Series, but I don't think so. So R-Truth has just retained the 24-7 championship and he has the Lucha House Party, Akira Tozawa and Drew Gulak, a.k.a. 2020's version of the Job Squad, going after R-Truth. Drew Gulak has just said that John Cena sucks. So there we go. So that was the match on the kickoff show. That was a lot of fun. I, I, you know, sarcasm. I just spoke the whole way through it because that was, that was what that was. As we go back to the kickoff show, so let's go through the, the card for tonight. I should have prepared and got the card up first. But the, uh, let's go through the, yeah, let's go through the card, for tonight's show. We of course have the WWE Championship, on the line. Uh, in a Hell in a Cell match, we have Drew McIntyre defending. We have Drew McIntyre defending against Randy Orton inside Hell in a Cell. We also have the Universal Championship on the line in an I Quit match inside Hell in a Cell. Universal Champion Roman Reigns defending against Jey Uso. We have the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line. Guess what? Inside Hell in a Cell, you guessed it. As uh, Bailey defends SmackDown Women's Championship against Sasha Banks. We also have Jeff Hardy facing off against Elias, continuing their feud from Monday Night Raw. We also have Otis uh, defending his Money in the Bank briefcase against The Miz. The winner of that match will become the official holder for the Money in the Bank briefcase after the Lauren Otis segment this past Friday on SmackDown. Interesting to see who leaves with the Money in the Bank briefcase there. We now have a promo with Mustafa Ali on the kickoff show. Be interesting to see what happens in terms of this Fiend versus Retribution storyline that they have been teasing recently. You know, so they're not calling him Mustafa Ali, it's Mustafa Ali now. I don't know about you, but I do find it difficult to believe Mustafa Ali as a heel, considering what a great guy everyone knows he is. But I do, I, and I made a video on it, people were unhappy that Ali tied in the the SmackDown hacker gimmick into this. I'm glad they tied it off. I'm glad they tied it off. I'm glad I don't like loose ends. Mustafa Ali presents a proposal. He's present presenting an idea that seems one of retribution. One member of Retribution will face one member of the Hurt Business tonight at Hell in the South. So another match announcement. I, to be honest, I expected that this would be the case because I mentioned in a couple of the previews that we that we did here that to be honest, when it comes to when it comes to these shows, WWE really doesn't care that much ahead of time of announcing stuff because they get the majority of their signups. They get the majority of their signups. Um, the day of or the day prior to the event going on the network. So it's not like it was back in the day. They don't have to really sally you that much on 
um, the card because they know you have the network anyway or they know people will sign up for the network on the Sunday anyway. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't really bother them <laughs> that much. So that's the case. Only Reston says Morrison should take the money in the bank. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. If there was anyone out of that trio of Otis, The Miz or John Morrison that I'd want to have the holding the money in the bank briefcase, it'd be John Morrison. He's 40 years old and I still think he has all the potential to be a world champion in WWE. Does Vincent Mann see him as a world champion? That's the difference. That's the difference right there. So um, who knows? Who knows? I mean... I don't. I don't know who's gonna who's gonna leave us the money in the bank holder tonight. I would suspect Otis, and the reason that I say that is because Vince McMahon is a big fan of Otis. There have been ideas pitched. There have been multiple, apparently, ideas pitched to have Otis drop the money in the bank briefcase. However, it's Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon is the guy that um, wants. Vince McMahon is the guy that likes Otis, and you can almost hear Vince McMahon's laughter, can't you? You can hear Vince McMahon's laughter and cackle every time Otis has his segment. I mean, Monday Night and Raw, was it El Gran Gordo, which means the big fat man or something like that. So, shocking of that. David Valentine says, Kane will return and choke slam Roman Reigns. I don't think so. Kane's mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee, and given the current climate at the moment, he's got uh, a lot on his plate. And some of his stuff recently is very strange, very strange. As we see a promo package for Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. Really looking forward to this one. Really looking forward to Roman Reigns Jey Uso tonight. I think if people felt that the match at Clash of Champions was emotional, if people think the match at Clash of Champions was gritty and uncomfortable, you ain't seen nothing yet because tonight it's going to be tonight it's going to be very, very. Uh, I think even more gritty. I would love to see them get color in this match. I don't think they will though. That's that would be my only thing. I think if this was. 15 years ago, if this was the mid-2000s or the late 90s, you'd have um, you'd have seen Reigns and Uso get colour. Or certainly Jey Uso. You'd, if this was 15 years ago, if this was in the mid-2000s, you would have Roman Reigns beat Jey Uso to a bloody pulp to the point where he would say, I quit, uh, through blood dripping down his face. That's what they would have. And that would be drama. That would be grit. That would be emotion. But they won't have that. They won't have that in 2020 um, due to, you know, PG, pandemic, all of that sort of stuff. It doesn't send the right message, to be fair, does it? Early Reston says, I don't understand what Vince sees uh, see on Miz. He is so weak in the ring. Morrison should turn heel on Miz and steal his money in the bank if Miz wins it today. I, I, to, to be fair, though, I think if they, if they switch to money in the bank, the Miz will keep it. I don't think they'd be doing so much juggling when it comes to the money in the bank briefcase. But I, I, I agree with your point there that I think that John Morrison is incredibly talented. I think Miz is incredibly talented too. You have to look at his journey and what he's achieved. People thought he would achieve nothing in the WWE. Nothing. And he, uh, he is, he's overachieved, quite frankly. And he is such a, a valuable asset to WWE now, whether it's in the ring, his experience backstage... He's on two. He's got two shows. Well, he's on three shows on the USA Network at this point. He's on Raw. He's on Miz and Misses, and he's on Cannonball, which he hosts. So he is a very, very valuable commodity when it comes to WWE right now. Brian says, "Lucky I have three monitors. Pay for you on one. Warzone on the second, and two weeks till Cold War." I'm guessing that's a, a Call of Duty thing. I haven't played Call of Duty in years, mate. Uh, Manos Manos says Morrison should should face Otis today. Miz already had a bad reign as WWE champion. While it's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting that the Miz never got another reign as WWE champion. You could argue at the time was he ready? I think today's version of the Miz is more ready to be a WWE champion than 2011's Miz was. I think the Miz was also unfortunate, if you think about it, at the time is that he was a third wheel. He was a third wheel. That WrestleMania 27 that he main evented, even though he won, that was all about The Rock and John Cena. That was laying the groundwork for their match the following year at WrestleMania. People almost forget about The Miz because he wasn't important. He wasn't He wasn't important in all of that. Wow, so Roman Reigns and Jey Uso, by all accounts, is kicking off. Hal in the Cell. It's opening Hal in the Cell, which says to me that our main event tonight is going to be Bailey versus Sasha Banks, which is absolutely the right call. Absolutely the right call that Bailey and Sasha Banks main events tonight. So I would suggest that's the case. 
It also means that the uh, the WWE Championship not main event in the pay per view probably continues here. However, I would say given the time that has take has been put into the Bailey Sasha Banks feud, given the amount of time and stories that this that has been told in this Bailey and Sasha Banks feud, it looks to me like it's going to main event, and that is absolutely the right call. Absolutely the right call. So we're about two minutes just. Two minutes 30 or so away from Hell and Cell going on the air. We'll be doing a watch along for the entirety of the show. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. You can do that. Click in the bottom right hand corner. If you're excited for Hell and Cell, smash a like on the like button as well. Um, Super chats are open as well. You can do that by clicking the dollar sign in the chat. Any donations to the channel are greatly appreciated. We've only just hit 1,000 subscribers, so everyone that has subscribed, we really do appreciate it. If you're new, there's no time like the present to subscribe to Rest News 365. We're going to be doing a lot more watch longs over the coming months. This is definitely going to be a regular thing. If you enjoy this kind of thing, then we will be doing more and more in the future. Manos Manos says, John Cena versus Miz was a weak match. Generally, Miz uh, matches are most of the times under 3.5 stars. Only with Ziggler has he had good matches and Brian. Well, it's a difficult one. I don't really do stars. I, that, I've mentioned this a few times. I don't really do stars. I think you know you either you either enjoy a match or you don't. And I think if you once you start once you start adding in stars and you know all that kind of stuff, it, you can overcomplicate things. I had this today. I had a comment on the uh, on one of the videos we did. We did a, a Bound for Glory Fallout video and just said about some of the surprises, some of the title changes, and someone said on there, I really enjoyed it, I don't care what you say, I enjoyed it, I thought it was great, because I'd said that I was about slightly let down, I thought it was a good show, but I didn't think it was up to the levels of Slammiversary, etc., and I thought they could have done a better job. And my response to when people, when they said, yeah, I don't care what you say, I enjoyed it, was, I'm really glad you enjoyed it, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Because the point of any of these programs and the point of any of these pay per views and any of these TV shows is to entertain you. All of these shows are meant to entertain you. So if you have been entertained, if you have enjoyed them, great. Because that was it served its purpose for you. And the opinions are just that. My opinion is just as valid as your opinion. My opinion is just as valid as Dave Mouser's. Your opinion is just as valid as Dave Mouser's because they're just that, they're opinions. Pro wrestling is like music. There's different genres and different tastes. So any and all opinions are always welcome on this channel. If they're different to mine, that's great. I, I love discussion. I love different opinions and um, they're just that. David Valentine says, Can Roman Reigns tell Jay Uso from Jimmy Uso apart? Reigns could be wrestling one and think it's the other brother he's wrestling. You can tell them apart. You can tell them apart easily. And plus, uh, Jimmy Uso's injured at the moment. He's not going to be back cleared to compete until January. Brian says, Otis will lose tonight. Also, I give another 14 99 to a local food bank. Glad people are not paying for Premier League football on uh, pay-per-view. Well, that is great to hear, Brian, that you donating to the local food banks. It's a bit off-topic. But over here in the UK, there's a there's a drive to and a, a petition raised by a professional football player called Marcus Rashford to ensure that uh, school children get free school meals that are under that people who are on benefits get free school meals during the uh, half terms and Christmas breaks, which has been rejected by the government. But we are seeing just a groundswell, a groundswell in people, uh, local organisations, companies donating to that. Cultaholic on uh, YouTube has also donated to it so it's uh, it's fantastic to see so um you're a credit brian absolutely fantastic to hear only wrestling says let's see who's going to win between drew and randy i guess it's randy orton's time i agree i do i do agree i i think i my prediction tonight was that randy orton would be uh, leaving the wwe champion because i think he's gonna have the championship as he feuds with edge when edge returns uh, in the near future edge is Scheduled to return, I think, around January time. Possibly even earlier. It depends how the rehab is going. He did say it was going slower. Manos Manos says, I have heard that Big E is going to win the Royal Rumble. This is going to be the worst booking decision ever. I, I Big E, don't sleep on him. Big E is so talented. So talented. He is, um, he is a main event and he's a world champion waiting to happen. As we have the, uh, the cold open for the show now, hyping up the matches. We have the uh, the Roman Reigns Jey Uso hype package to open the show here. So who are we all thinking? What are our predictions for tonight? As they mentioned, uh, Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso is kicking off the show. Who do we think is going to be leaving the Universal Champion? 
I'm going with uh, I'm going with Roman Reigns, of course, to win it. As I would be absolutely, to be honest, stunned if Jey Uso became the Universal Champion. Stranger things have happened, but I don't think that's going to be the case here. I think Roman Reigns is going to leave Universal Champion. Like I said, back in the day, if this was 15 years ago, there'd be blood, there'd be colour. But I don't think that would be the case here. But hey, it's going to be uncomfortable. This is going to be uncomfortable. And it's going to be a great thing to watch. Not that I like watching uncomfortable things, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun here. We've also got the... Uh, the red Hell in a Cell for a cage, whatever you want to call it, for... When did this come into effect? Two years ago? I think two years ago, 2018, the red Hell in a Cell came in. Horrible. Horrible. Why can't they just... I Quite literally, they gave it a fresh coat of paint. Nobody wanted that to be red. I mean, I know I've got the red behind me right now on the, uh, on the graphic, but just very unnecessary, isn't it? It was very, very unnecessary. What's that stuff they've got tied up there? If you can see that on the uh, on the stage, it looks like they've got something tied up over it. I don't know if that's meant to be pyro or for the drones or... Strange. It's always great to open an event with pyro as well. Awesome. Kevin says, why Asuka have no opponent tonight? Why? There's only, what, five matches announced for the show. Uh, technically six, now the Retribution Hurt Business one. But you're right. You're right. I would have thought, given that we've had new superstars go over to Raw, that Asuka would have an opponent, but she obviously doesn't, which is a shame. But she will hopefully soon. Who do you think could face Asuka on Monday Night Raw? We can say in the comments section. Uh, Manos Manos says about Big E that he doesn't... Uh, they don't think... Be, that people will take them seriously after his funny gimmick. Well, I, there is um, the report that Biggie is not going to be dropping the New Day gimmick, but he's going to be getting more serious, which is in preparation for him jumping to that next level of the main event scene. So they're going to they're going to give it a go. As we have Corey Graves and Michael Cole welcome us to Hell in the Cell, and we have. Jay Uso versus Roman Reigns coming up next. I think I'm going to go to another video package, which is fun. <laughs> we just, well, I mean, what, we're five minutes into the show and we're going to have another video package. Filling for time already. Kevin says, Nikki versus Asuka. I, Nikki, I think, is Nikki Cross? Oh, yeah, she was drafted to Raw along with Alexa Bliss. Of course, Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss versus Asuka could be happening on Raw too. Given that she's got those sort of fiend powers now, does that does that factor in as well? Possibly, possibly. I think the, I think the fiend version of Alexa Bliss versus Asuka could be quite interesting. And of course, as well, you have to think about the people returning soon when it comes to Asuka. Charlotte Flair is going to be returning very, very soon. That's why she was involved in the draft. She is going to be back before WrestleMania, possibly before Survivor Series 2. So are we going to get Charlotte Flair versus Asuka? If that is the case, Asuka's title reign will end very quickly because we know how much WWE loves to put the Raw Women's Championship on Asuka. You also have to factor in Ronda Rousey. And I know people will say she's not coming back. She is coming back. Um, there are plans for her to return at WrestleMania 37. There are plans for her to return at WrestleMania 36. And then... Uh, the pandemic happened and the world went crazy. So Ronda Rousey will appear in a WWE ring again. There is um, discussion she might have even, Paul Heyman teased, that Ronda Rousey might have even extended her WWE contract to different terms. She said she was never going to return as a full-time WWE superstar. This does not mean she hasn't re-signed with a different deal, different terms, and could almost be in the sense of a Goldberg deal. I know we don't want to talk about Goldberg, but that would be uh, that would be the case with that. So we're still watching this Roman Reigns J Uso promo package right now. We're seven minutes into the show and we have seen two promo packages and some pyro. It feels like I'm at a bad Guy Fawkes night. Uh, David Valentine says, I want to see Asuka versus Dana Brick for the Raw, Raw Women's Championship. Asuka would probably destroy her in about five seconds. Uh, Vanos Manoff says, what did you think of Rich Swan versus Eric Young? Most people liked it. Me, on the other hand, I found it boring and Rich Swan is a world champion. No way, LOL. You know what, when it came to Bound for Glory last night, 
I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy the show because I did enjoy the show. I didn't think it was on the level of Slammiversary. I thought Slammiversary was by far a better show. I thought the main event suffered from what was a very strange second half of the show. Some of those matches last night, I thought there was strange booking. I thought there was um, strange finishes. I think it also followed the Knockouts Championship match. The Knockouts Championship match was great, but people were confused and a little bit angry, quite frankly, about the Kylie Ray situation. And it just it felt like Bound for Glory last night. Again, very strange booking decisions and some strange outcomes there. But the main event was fine. Rich Swan as a as as a champion. I think Impact has it. The issue Impact has right now is who's the top babyface. They don't have that d- d- definite top 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 babyface. You can't determine who that is. And I think everyone on the roster is, is is vying for that spot. Rich Swan deserves a shot. We'll see what happens. He's upped his game in this feud, so we'll have to wait and see. But the promo package is finally over, so we're going to actually have some matches here. We're eight minutes into the show and we're actually going to maybe have some action. Fingers crossed as uh, Jay Uso is going to make his entrance here. He's got some sweet gear on. He's got some... Uh, here we go. He's got some white, um, white pants, as the Americans would say. And he's got the sort of Samoan floral necklace deal going on as well. Which, of course, is what he wore in his entrance to his Universal Championship match at Clash of Champions. But then Roman Reigns had it on at the end of the match. So maybe Roman Reigns will be airing that, wearing that once again. David Valentine says, Dana Brooke can be a megastar if they book her correctly. Eric says, Dana Brooke versus Asuka. He wants to see it as well. Uh, Green Spartan 44 says, when does Roman fight? Absolutely right now. He's going to be fighting right now. Jey Uso has just entered Hell in the Cell. So Roman Reigns will be following very, very soon. So if you want to watch Roman Reigns fight, go onto your WWE Network if you have it. And you can do, uh, you can watch along with me. You can watch along with me and all of us here on the channel. Be sure to subscribe to Wrestling News 365. We'll be doing a lot more watch alongs in the future um, if you enjoy this kind of thing. Well, Jay Uso did have the neck, neck, floral neck thing on. He's just destroyed it. And there are petals and flowers all over the ring now. What a waste. What a waste. Uh, only wrestling. Do you think Conor McGregor is ever going to wrestle for WWE? Never say never. Never say never. Um, it's one of those things where he always knows WWE will pay him that green if he ever wants to do it uh, but WWE would have to pay him a lot of money ever since he had that fight with Floyd Mayweather his his asking price is I mean it's, it's off camera it's all the way up here does WWE have the uh, the will to pay that they've got the um, Roman Reigns is just making his entrance <laughs> and uh, they've got that weird gold bronze Roman Reigns thing that always makes his entrance and it's just very odd looking very odd looking it always really puts me off I think it's terrifying but here comes Roman Reigns Roman Reigns slight gear change of course that he debuted at Clash of Champions he no longer has the vest he's ditched the vest he's um he's, yeah ditched the vest so he's wrestling shirtless now uh, which, to be honest, Roman Reigns is, I mean, jacked beyond levels. He is absolutely stacked. That time away from the ring has done him favours because he looks in unbelievable shape. Unbelievable shape. Um, he's also got, it looks like a, like a gold sort of glove on it. It looks like Thanos. Roman Reigns is going to snap Jey Uso out of existence tonight, it would seem. Now, Jey Uso also, as I mentioned, is wearing white. So I mentioned about wanting to see some colour in this match and someone doing a blade job. Now, we saw at uh, Baron for Glory last night, Moose did the same thing. Moose wore all white. Why did he wear all white? Because EC3 did that blade job. He did one, two, three EC3 marks on his forehead and he bled all over Moose and all over his white gear. I'm just saying Jey Uso is wearing the white gear tonight. Maybe we see a bit of... Uh, Bit of blood on there too. I think that would take that match from here all the way up to here. That would be a lot of fun. Kevin says, what on earth is going on with the women's tag division? Every tag division, every tag team they have, they break up. Kevin, it's a, it's a deal not only with the women's tag team division, but with the tag division in general in WWE. It's never been a priority, unfortunately. Brian says he went to bed early after Bound for Glory ended. He's supposed to go on holiday in Australia, but we're doing I'm 11 Wales and Castle this, earlier this year. Oh, there you go. 
Uh, Eric says Lacey Evans versus Asuka. Name an opponent for Asuka to face. Only wrestling says only Conor McGregor could boost the ratings. Nothing could boost the ratings right now. WWE's ratings are dying. Absolutely dying. And they have been for a very long time. As we see another... We've got another... It's not a promo package. But it's the interview that Paul Heyman did on the kickoff show. So... We're 12 matches into the... 12 minutes, rather. 12 matches, I wish. We're 12 minutes into the show right now, and we still have not had the opening match kick off. We are... Uh, we are certainly filling for time. Let's go, let's go to the Universal Championship graphic. I want... Um, I want new... I don't know about you. I want uh, I want new Roman Reigns music. I very much want that. I think this whole heel transformation, this whole heel transformation is going to be complete once you know we've got different attitude, different look. Roman Reigns now different ring gear. You need different music. Once you get that different music, then we're going to have something cool. But it is coming. Roman Reigns. He did. A, I think he did like a Zoom call or something like that. If you before before Clash of Champions, he did a Zoom call and he basically said, you know. Comes to the new gear, comes to the new music, it's coming. And there's a lot of new music coming for superstars at the moment. Keith Lee, he's getting new music again. Thank Lord. Because he, uh, his music is awful. Leandro says, are we able to watch? I, I, Leandro man, I wish. I wish I had the rights to show you Hell in the South, but I don't. <laughs> if I showed you it, we would get kicked off of YouTube, my friend. If you want to watch uh, Hell in the South, just go to the WWE Network. If you're a new subscriber, you get it for free and you'll get Survivor Series free too. It's a pretty good deal and it's only $9.99 a month. I don't work for WWE, but it is a good deal. Uh, only Wrestling says, Lacey Evans is so underrated. She should be Women's World Champion very soon. She might be on Raw. Maybe that's why she was moved. Eric says, Jay beat Roman. So what are we predicting for this one, guys? Who do we think is going to leave the Universal Champion here? Do we think it's going to be Roman Reigns or Jey Uso? Roman Reigns is certainly a heel there. Um, I think, obviously, he is a heel, but there's been discussion about how much of a heel he really is. But if you notice the Thunderdome there, they are very, very produced, by the way, the guys that are in the Thunderdome. If you've ever been in it yourself you will know that you hear a producer essentially telling you when to boo, when to cheer, when to clap. It's like being in a studio audience. And they're obviously being told there to boo and put thumbs down for Roman Reigns. So we're finally on, well, we're underway. The bow has rang 15 minutes into the show. <laughs> 15 minutes into the show, we finally have a the bow ringing for a match on a wrestling show. Thank Lord. But it feels like, you know... It's like there's a major sort of stalling here. This is crazy. And when was the last time we had a pay per view where the first fifty minutes nothing happened? I mean, I've un I've seen promos, but as we have Jey Uso and Roman Reigns talking a bit of trash to each other, to start this one out. Of course, that's the good thing with the Thunderdome. He's the same like it was in the Performance Center. I remember saying this at the time as we got a lockup to start the match off here. I remember saying during those Performance Center shows, what I did think was good and something that WWE could take away for future shows is that the promos during those empty arena shows at the Performance Center were actually really good. And the reason why is because you could get so intimate with them. They were up there and you could take your time and it was very, you could speak quietly. You didn't need to scream and shout and talk over the audience like you usually do on a, a traditional WWE show. It was. Uh, it felt a lot more like uh, watching an actual TV show, and it feels like now they've got back into the arena. They've lost that a bit, but um, I thought that was one of the actual benefits. You know, it was limited, but one of the actual benefits to those empty arena shows that the promos were fantastic. The promos were fantastic. Eric says Randy Orton to beat Drew in Hell in a Cell and uh, Banks to beat Bailey. There's some predictions there. Uh, Pedram says, hey, is this the smallest number of main event matches on a pay-per-view main event? This pay-per-view is five matches. It is five matches. You're absolutely right, my friend. Uh, only five matches announced for this show. It's a bit of a, almost like an NXT takeover. They usually announce five matches for the show. To be honest, if I'm going to be brutally honest, as Roman Reigns has got control of this match very early on, I'm not complaining about the number of matches for the show because, quite frankly, 
we've seen the other side of things when it comes to that with WWE. Sometimes with their pay-per-views, they'll have 10, 11 matches, and that show will go five hours. Remember, And not even for like a WrestleMania. WrestleMania going five hours is too much, but you'd have, I don't know, Backlash go like five, six hours, which is so unnecessary. So unnecessary. Nobody wants that. I would be very happy if this show tonight goes two and a half hours. Perfect. Great time. The irony being is that's less time than Monday Night Raw. So already Roman Reigns is in control over uh, Jey Uso here. We've got the similar similar style to the Clash of Champions match. Jey Uso with a kick to the face. Uh, jumping kick to the face to Roman Reigns there. Roman Reigns definitely got this golden glove on. So it looks like Thanos. Same energy. So Reigns is on the uh, outside of the ring right now. It looks like Jey is going to go for a dive. Suicide dive and wham. Roman Reigns has gone into Hell in a Cell. But um, mentioning about that Hell in a Cell. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's all of you guys thoughts about the red Hell in a Cell? I'll be totally honest. I hate it. I don't know why we have the red Hell in a Cell. Nobody asked for that. It was fine the way it was. What really annoyed me, actually, I think this probably just made me feel old. It's probably why it annoyed me. I saw on Twitter the other day, it might have been, it might, it's either WWE or Fox. Uh, probably WWE on Fox, because the WWE account wouldn't even do something this risky. But they said, which do you prefer? Do you prefer, like, the red Hell in a Cell? Or they called the other version, the just this, this cell without the red paint, they called it the classic version. And I was infuriated. I was like, that was not the classic version. The classic version is was much smaller than this the classic version is the version used by you know mick foley triple h Shawn michaels the undertaker that's the classic version the classic version was a lot smaller and it felt like you know the classic version felt like it could fall apart at any second especially when you had the undertaker and mick foley up there walking on it and you had you saw all of the uh the the ties and the beams just pinging off because it, they couldn't handle the weight that's the classic version the classic version is actually much much smaller they upgraded to this larger version in uh, 2006. The first match, the first match in the larger version was actually uh, DX versus the McMahons and the Big Show, back at Unforgiven 2006. As Jey Uso is a bit more fired up here, he's put Roman Reigns back in the ring. I felt like this was going to be uh, a much slower pace. I mentioned this in the preview. The match at Clash of Champions was a lot. Uh, a lot slower it was a lot it was a much slower place. Uso's going to go for oh he's just been speared. Roman Reigns has just speared Jay Uso. He was going for the Umaga hip attack in the corner, but Roman Reigns has just speared Jay Uso. Remember this is an I quit match. No pinfalls, no submissions. You're going to have people uh, make your opponents say I quit. Interested once again to see how they're going to do this traditionally. With the I quit matches, you'd have the old referee with a microphone shove it into their mouth. Uh, the heavy breathing. The <laughs> but I guess given that there's no fans uh, no fans in the Thunderdome, you don't need it. So you can just um, you can just turn the mic up on the cams and they would say I quit. As Roman Reigns is talking trash to Jey Uso saying you should have stayed at home. I don't know what I think about that that gold. I mentioned it a couple of times now, but I don't know what I meant to think about that gold, gold sort of gauntlet that Roman Reigns is going for. Yeah, he he does legitimately look like Thanos. If he had like a, a funny chin, he would literally be Thanos. Maybe he's going there with the teeth. His teeth are crazy. David Valentine says, as long as they put on a great match, I don't care about the colour and size of the cage. You make a good point, David. It's just aesthetics, of course. It's me nitpicking. And Jey Uso has drop-kicked uh, Roman Reigns out of the ring. He's gone into the Hell in a Cell there. He looks like he's going to go for another dive here, another suicide dive. And a right hand with the gold gauntlet of Roman Reigns. Well, bang. Roman Reigns has just hit another spear on Jey Uso. And this one was uh, was brutal. <laughs> this one was a spear. At, 
not so much a spear to the gut, it was almost like a shoulder tackle. I think they're going to show it again here. So Jey Uso drop kicks Roman Reigns into the cage. He goes for a suicide dive. Roman Reigns hits him with a, like a forearm to the face. And then Reigns hits a spear. Bang. And he sort of jumps up and comes down like that. Jey Uso doesn't move. He just drives into the mat. Nice spear. Who has the best spear? That's a question. Roman Reigns doesn't have the best spear. I think arguably, and I know I give him a lot of, a lot of, a lot of crap, but I suppose Goldberg actually does have one of my fa more favourite spears, in the sense that um, he just kills people. Which I mean, I like a bit of realness. He does, but it does. I can imagine that absolutely hurts because his spear is legitimately a tackle. I always found that um, Batista had a good spear as well. And the Big Show, I remember the Big Show did a spear once to Evan Bourne on Raw and it legitimately looked like he broke him in half. It was awesome. Reigns going to go for another spear. He's going to hit it. Oh, kick to the face there by Jey Uso. Stops the spear. Here we go. Super kick bang to the face of Roman Reigns. Uso looks like he's going to go for another splash. Here we go. Bang. Uso splashed by Jey Uso. What's interesting about this, and I suppose is the issue for an I Quit match, is that from a from a psychology point of view and a storytelling point of view, this is probably benefit that there isn't fans here for this one because of this, is that it's the same with submission matches. What is so great about a traditional match is you've got the one-two kick out, you've got false finishes, you've got the crowd jumping in on the near falls and all this kind of stuff. The issue with I quit matches, the issue with submission matches, maybe table matches as well, is there's no drama of the false finish. I suppose maybe with table matches, there is a false finish and that they look like they're going to go through the table, I suppose. But with I quit matches, the story has to be told in a different way. The story has to be told in the drama of the, the facial reactions, the body language. Does it look like they're going to say I quit? Are they on the brink of saying I quit? All this kind of stuff. That is... That is difficult. <laughs> so the referee is asking Roman Reigns if he quits. Roman Reigns said, the head of the table never quits. If I was a referee and someone said that to me, the head of the table never quits, I'd just be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> just say no. That takes way more effort. That takes me way more effort to say the head of the table never quits as opposed to no. Imagine saying that when you do go to, I don't know, the shop. Do you want a receipt? The head of the table never wants a receipt. Okay, well, all right. <laughs> Don't give you one then. Jey Uso's grabbed something from under the ring there. It's a leather strap from Jey Uso there. It's a leather strap. It looks odd. It's sort of like flesh coloured. As apparently Hell in the Cell is trending number one in the United States right now. There you go. If you're enjoying this match, smash a like on the like button. Really does help us out here on YouTube, go up the rankings, get to people's recommendation feeds. If they haven't seen any of our videos previously, here we go. Looks like Jesus is going to give Roman Reigns a whipping. So we have a whip to the back there with that leather strap on Roman Reigns. Jey Uso is cussing up a storm as well. He just said, dog, you know what? I, I would probably want to mention to Jey Uso, usually the crowd might, you know, overcome what you're saying. We can hear every word you say. <laughs> Bang, he's going to do another whip. Oof. Oh my God, another spear. That's the third spear by Roman Reigns in this match. A couple of whips by Jey Uso and Roman Reigns has just speared him once again. Roman Reigns is going full. Um, Roman Reigns is going full Brock Lesnar and just using his finish all the time like a regular move. Jey Uso is saying he can't breathe after these spears. He's selling the hell out of the spears. The referee is asking him if he quits. If he quits after a uh, three spears, I think he would be a bit of a. <laughs> um, Then we get the replay of the third spear there by Roman Reigns. 
Now Roman Reigns has the leather strap. Oh my god. The problem is with those like leather straps, there's no way to fake it. There's no way to fake it. It's like taking a steel chair shot. At the end of the day at the end of the day, a steel chair is a steel chair. You don't fake that. You just have to take it in part of the body that can take the the, the pain the most. And that's what it's like with these with the leather straps, it's what it's like with the with the kendo stick, you just have to take it. That's why you get those marks. It was the same with Dominic Mysterio. Remember with Dominic Mysterio and Seth Rollins and the bang again uh, with the with the kendo sticks. I saw people saying, ah, oh, makeup. Are you kidding me? You get in the ring. You get in the ring and you take that and see how fake it is and see if it's makeup. You for real? Roman Reigns has uh, tied the leather strap around the wrist of Jey Uso there. He's going to do another whip, it looks like. Here we go. Man, these look and sound painful. Here we go, one to the stomach. Oh my God. But this is what I said to expect. This is what I said to expect in the preview that we did on the channel is that if you felt that the match at Clash of Champions was uncomfortable, if you felt that the the, the match at Clash of Champions was, sh was slow and it was about drama and about emotion and making you feel uneasy, then you just wait for this one because this one is going to make that uncomfortable nature it's going to make that difficult to watch nature it's going to make that you know grit your teeth and oh that's that look that looks and sounds painful it's going to take that upper level and that's exactly what they're doing right now with these whips we're going to be getting the pictures on social media later of all the whip marks on the back of Jey Uso and Roman Reigns this is the all by design as Jey Uso is holding on to the ropes but Roman Reigns is going to pull him into the ring because he's got that leather strap wrapped around his wrist. But Uso's got a bit of a forearm to the face there of Roman Reigns. Roman won one of his own. This has turned into almost a bit of a strap match. You got <laughs> how many variety of matches we've got? We've got three matches in one here. We've got a Hell in a Cell match. We've got an I Quit match. And we've also got a, uh, a strap match. A super kick though there by Jey Uso to uh, Roman Reigns. Reigns gone for the Superman punch, but he missed. He's using the strap. It's just literally turned into a strap match. Uso's going to try tie up Roman Reigns and he can't do it. <laughs> Here we go. He's got it wrapped around him. God, is he choking him? Jey Uso, he's got him sort of tied up. He's got his arm tied around his throat, but he's actually got the leather strap tied around his throat, man. This is literally turned into a choke. It's if this is, um, if this is, if this is Daniel Bryan in, in 2010, he's getting fired. This was the same thing that Daniel Bryan got fired for when he did this on Justin Roberts, but Jey Uso is doing it on Roman Reigns right now. As I mentioned, what is very confusing here is that this is turned into three types of match in one. This is a Hell in a Cell match, this is an I Quit match, and this is also a strap match somehow. Which is very odd. But Jey Uso is legitimately trying to kill Roman Reigns on uh, pay-per-view as we speak right now because he is trying to choke Roman Reigns. The referee is asking Roman Reigns if he quits, but Roman Reigns is motionless here. He said no, I think. <laughs> Jey Uso. <laughs> Jey Uso keeps saying, did he quit? Did he quit? Did he quit? Did he quit? I don't know, Jay. You've actually just sort of choked him unconscious. It's kind of a bit of an issue there in terms of the I quit match. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> Daniel Bryan, he lost his job for doing that. But Jey Uso, he can win the Universal Championship for doing that. And that was 10 years ago. That was that was PG 10 years ago. What's PG then is probably TV 14 right about now. That's how the world evolves. Jey Uso's got a steel chair though. Roman Reigns is uh, conscious at least at this point, which is good. 
What is everyone thinking of this match so far? Jey Uso is, uh, is he sitting down on that chair? I mean, it's time to take a break of the match. Why not? Now he's got the steel chair. He's going to use it as a weapon. Here we go. He's going to swing it and a Superman punch by Roman Reigns. Reigns is going for that. He's going for that guillotine submission. Here we go. This is submission that he beat Braun Strowman with on the season premiere of SmackDown a couple of weeks ago. Perfect for an I quit match because if he taps out or he says I quit, that's it. So uh, Roman Reigns looks to be choking out Jey Uso right now. Is the referee going to say it? Jey Uso is unconscious, it looks like. I suppose he needs to say I quit. This isn't the case of of uh, just passing out. You need to say I quit. I'm going to predict the finish right now. It'll be interesting to see if this happens. If Jimmy, What happens if Jimmy Uso comes out and then J and Roman Reigns threatens to sort of break his leg? Or something like that. Would he quit for his own brother? Maybe. Maybe. Jey Uso is refusing to say I quit though. Probably because he can't because he nearly got choked out by his, uh, by his cousin. They're both trying to choke each other out. It's getting very strange. But he didn't say I quit there, Jey Uso. So Roman Reigns is trying to figure out what's going on next. But it's the same. This is what I mentioned in the preview. Uh, not to toot my own horn, but toot toot. Because uh, this is what I mentioned in the preview. The, the nuts and bolts of this match are actually very basic. If you were to grade this match on technical ability and technical wrestling, it's, it's not a classic at all. But it's the emotion. This is the same as the Clash of Champions match. It's about the emotion. It's about the story that they're telling here. The nuts and bolts of this match are very, very basic because they don't need to do anything. They don't need high spots. They don't need it. It's all about emotion. Reigns is telling Jey Uso to say I quit because he's telling right now he's going to take this to the next level. Jey Uso is refusing though. So what does the next level mean by Roman Reigns? Because it looks like, uh, I hope the next level means blood. I am one of those guys. I am I am baying for blood. He's telling, uh, he's telling Jey Uso to quit. He's not doing anything, but he's telling Jey Uso to quit. The, refer the referee is saying, I'm right here, Jey Uso, I'm right here. <laughs> Roman Reigns is telling the referee to shut his mouth because he's right here. Paul Heyman looks like he's going to cry. Maybe he's just found out what AJ Styles has been saying about him. That picture of Paul Heyman is like this. <laughs> he's like this. I'm telling you now, you will see that on Twitter for maybe the next six weeks, every day. So Roman Reigns has said he's going to take it to the next level, whatever that means. Roman Reigns is being incredibly methodical here. Very, very slow pace, but there's nothing wrong with that because it's about emotion. It's about storytelling. We're going to get a drive-by bang. Drive-by kick to the side of the head by Jey Uso. Onto Jey Uso, rather. Referee's asking Jey Uso once again if he quits. The referee's getting mad involved in it, though. I'm right here. I'm right here. Jay, I'm right here. All you got to do is say, I quit. Do you quit? Do you quit? I don't think he is. Just say no. Let's see a replay of the drive-by kick there. As uh, Roman Reigns is hitting some uh, stiff punches and shots to the face, calling Jay Uso selfish. Roman Reigns is uh, he's grabbed the steel steps now. I wonder what this next level is by Roman Reigns. Jey Uso looks defenseless though. Oh, he looks like he's gonna place he's gonna place the steel steps between Jey Uso. He's sandwiching Jey Uso's head between the ring post and the steel steps, and it looks like Roman Reigns is gonna go for another drive by here. 
Roman Reigns is selling his concern, I suppose, for his cousin here. This is going to get brutal. You know it's serious because Michael Carr and Corey Graves are talking with their very serious hushed voices. This is serious now. Here we go. Drive by bang. Squish Jey Uso's head like a grape. Michael Cole screaming, saying, stop the match. Make him say I quit. Michael Cole obviously never saw Mick Foley fall off a roof. I, oh, I will say here, and this is starting to annoy me a bit, the ref needs to stop pressuring Jey Uso. He's, he's almost trying to tell him to say I quit. Just say it, just say it. You can get out of it, just say it. Just, do, just stand back. If he says it, he says it. Stop telling him to say it. Stop saying, oh, if you say it, say it. No. The referee needs to stop telling Jey Uso to say it. Obviously, I can't. Sheila says, can you show us, please? Obviously, I can't. I don't have the rights to that, unfortunately, Sheila. The referee was like he was going to call it off, but Roman Reigns has grabbed him by the back of the neck. He's saying that he's not allowing the referee to call it, so it's going to throw the referee over the top right. Good. The referee just took a hell of a bump outside of the ring. Roman Reigns has just thrown the referee outside of the ring. He isn't having Joe so good. That referee was annoying me, to be honest. Another ref is back in the ring. He's having a go at Roman Reigns. He scared him off. The door is open, by the way. The referee door, the uh, the referee coming in has opened the door of the cell, which says to me, which says to me, that someone is going to be coming in. Well, people are coming in. It's the agents. We've got Adam Pearce in. Scrap Daddy's here. More referees have entered the match. I mean, are we, are we seriously doing this? Are we seriously doing this? The third year in a row, they're trying to stop a Hell in a Cell match for reportedly being too violent. Did they never watch Mick Foley or Mankind versus The Undertaker from 1998? Have they never seen that before? Are you trying to stop another Hell in a Cell match? Are you kidding me? They are destroying the Hell in a Cell. Roman Reigns tried to throw uh, the steps in the ring, didn't make it first time. And this is just, oh, this just annoys me so much. So they're trying to do this again. I'm trying to stop a Hell in a Cell match. Are you for real? Saying that it's got too violent. This match is, if you look at other Hell in a Cell matches, this isn't violent by any stretch of the imagination. In terms of violence, this is actually quite limited in terms of other Hell in a Cell matches. You look at Triple H Hell in a Cell match, they've got screwdrivers, they're stabbing each other in the head. Roman's got Jey Uso pinned. With the steel steps. You've got agents on the outside telling him to stop. They need to get a life. And you realise the match. If the match is too barbaric, don't book a pay-per-view. You morons. Honestly. Roman Reigns has got Jey Uso pinned with the steel steps. Roman Reigns is saying that Jey Uso is testing me. Those officials, they're testing me. Roman Reigns is telling Jey Uso to acknowledge him. Roman Reigns is saying how serious it is being at the top, being the Universal Champion. Roman Reigns said he's going to end Jey Uso because he doesn't understand. I tell you who doesn't understand is the officials and referees about what a Hell in a Cell match is. Because they're trying to end it because a guy's unconscious. Here we go. Roman Reigns has picked up the steel steps. Looking like he's going to squish his head. Jimmy Uso's in the ring. Jimmy Uso is laying on his brother Jay. Telling him to stop. Jimmy Uso looks like he's crying. And he's over his brother Jay. He's asking Roman Reigns what he's doing. Jimmy Uso is asking what's wrong with Roman Reigns. He's crying. He's asking if Jay Uso is okay. Jimmy Uso says, "Whatever you're going through, we can fix this." 
This is uh, it's getting emotional. This is getting emotional. This is getting, this is getting to another level, isn't it? This is getting emotional, and uh, again, they're doing what they did at Clash of Champions. They're trying to show grit. They're trying to show drama. Roman Reigns is crying. Jimmy Uso is telling Roman Reigns to look at him. And Roman Reigns is sat in the middle of the ring and he's burst into tears. This is uh This is taking a turn I didn't see coming. Jimmy Uso says, Whatever you're going through, we can get through this. And Roman Reigns is just crying. Roman Reigns says he doesn't even know who he is. And he's apologizing now. This is crazy. Jimmy Uso saying he's 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 got him and he's offering his hand, in I guess friendship and family to Roman Reigns. This is this is taking, this is taking a turn. And Roman Reigns is still crying. I mean, it's unbelievable performance by Roman Reigns. Absolutely incredible. Reigns saying, "I don't know who I am anymore. I'm crying." And he's taking the hand of Jimmy Uso. Maybe in a sign of family. I would be quite worried, Jimmy, about what's about to come to you. Because here we go. And he's locked Jimmy Uso into the uh, the guillotine there. The injured Jimmy Uso is in a guillotine right now. Jimmy Uso is still injured, of course. Not cleared to return till January. But the injured Uso is being choked out. And he's he's got the hand... Of Jey Uso, he's trying to revive Jey Uso. Jey Uso is woken back up, and he's trying to he's trying to pull Roman Reigns off of Jey Uso. And there we go. Jey Uso just quit to save his brother. Something that I just said maybe about twenty minutes ago. If you want to rewind, I said maybe he would quit to save his brother. All I'm saying, up here, up here. But Roman Reigns wins the match and Roman Reigns is still the Universal Champion after Jey Uso quit to save his brother Jimmy after Roman Reigns had locked Jimmy Uso into the into the guillotine. I'm stumbling on my words there because Roman Reigns has a look of pure evil on his face right now. Oh my God. Man, he looks evil. Man, what facials by Roman Reigns right there. The dude was crying a minute ago. He was crying a minute ago, and now he's doing a face of pure evil. I mean, this guy, this guy, this guy's acting ability, this guy's range of emotions, he's put himself through and he's put the audience through in this match. What's a performance by Roman Reigns right there? My, oh my. Look at this guy's face. Incredible. And he's got his hand out while he's requesting the Universal Championship from Paul Heyman. Look at this guy's face. Absolutely fantastic. The, the, the storytelling, the emotion of that finish. The performance by Roman Reigns there is just... I mean out of this world by Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns broke down in the middle of the ring in tears, crying, saying he doesn't know who he is anymore. He then locked in the guillotine on Jimmy Uso, forced his cousin to quit to save his brother... His twin brother and now Roman Reigns with no tears in his eyes. He wipes the tears. He's just wiped the tears, the fake tears out of his face. Roman Reigns. And now he's just told them that he loves him. Oh, my God. That is, that is brilliant. That is absolute brilliance by Roman Reigns. Nobody, I mean, try anyone else in the world. Try and touch that performance by Roman Reigns. Try and touch... That emotion. People can say a lot of things about Roman Reigns, say that he's not the guy, say that his performance is all of this, saying he can't work or his matches suck. Roman Reigns just did a sports entertainment performance. I don't think like anyone has seen. Absolutely fantastic. Roman Reigns is still the Universal Champion after making his cousin say I quit in a match that was fantastic. And there we go. On the stage, there is the Wild Samoas, Samoans. Afra and Sika are on the stage. His uncle and his father. 
the WWE Hall of Famers. And uh, they are embracing Roman Reigns, Afro and Seek of the Wild Samoans. His father is putting on the, uh, the tribal necklace once again. His father hugs him. And uh, Roman Reigns not only is the head of the table, but this is this is next level stuff. Roman Reigns is the head of the table with the Wild Samoas. Wild Samoans, this is this is fantastic. What a picture that is. And of course, the Usos now, because they lost that match, they have been banished from the WWE. They have been banished. Their wives have been banished. Their family, their children, their children's children have all been banished. And what a symbolic shot that is, as you've got the family at the top of the ramp. You've got Afrin Seek of the Wild Samoans standing on the ramp, and you've got the exiled Usos in the ring right now. Brilliance. Absolute brilliance. How fantastic was that? Roman Reigns there. My oh my. That was that was something special. That was that was something special. William Blake says, is Jay still part of the family or no? He is not. They are excommunicated. They are gone. Uh Afra and Seeker making an appearance as well. Which are wise that is during a pandemic, nevertheless. Um great to see them. Great to see them. Nice touch. Absolutely a nice touch. Um, that was awesome. That was awesome. That that match was awesome. This is what annoys me because you will see people on social media after this match. Oh, it was slow. Oh, it was boring. That was emotion. That is that is professional wrestling right there. That is professional wrestling. That was awesome. Alpha and Seeker, the World Samoans. Are you kidding me? They are living legends. They are Hall of Famers. And they're just on the stage there with their son. With one son and the uncle. That is, that is, you just saw history right there. You saw history. That was a moment right there. Awesome. Awesome. I can't um, say enough good things about that match. That was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Ending was fantastic. Roman Reigns' performance was fantastic. Afro and Seeker of the Wild Samoans being on stage is brilliant. Awesome. Awesome. That's how that's how you kick off a pay-per-view. My God. How did you follow that? What did everyone think of that? Let us know your thoughts in the live chat or if you're watching this on demand afterwards in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to Wrestling News 365. They're showing a replay right now of how uh, the match ended as Roman Reigns had the guillotine in on Jimmy Uso and Jay Uso quits to save his cousin. Obviously, they're excommunicated from the family now. A bit sick of the agents and producers and referees trying to stop her never having a sound match, though. Good for Roman Reigns trying to get rid of them. Obviously, they don't know the rules. They need to check the WWE rule book. Not that one exists. But I thought that was brilliant. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. We've got Tom Phillips and Samoa Joe and Byron Saxon on camera right now. Samoa Joe's just called Roman Reigns a tyrant. I wouldn't mind seeing two battles of the Samoans there in Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns. That'd be a lot of fun. But Jey Uso did quit. So the match was done fair and square. As I mentioned in the preview, though, I don't think this story is done yet. I think there is more to this story. Um, most of the time, usually Hal Nassau would be the, the end of the chapter, as it were, or the end of the story when it comes to, when it comes to a storyline in WWE, but I don't think that's the case. You've got a, you've got two guys and their family that have been excommunicated from the rest of the family. So, uh, there's going to be a lot more left in that story, but we're, we're nearly an hour into the show and there's been one match, one match right now. So, uh, I don't think this next match is going to be that long. Because we're going to need... Especially that match was heavy. So I wouldn't be surprised if Owen's a bit more light-hearted now. But we'll have to wait and see. I'm not sure what's going on right now because... Are we meant to be getting... Oh, it's Elias. That's what we're waiting for. So it's going to be Elias versus Jeff Hardy next. 
to pick up our spirits after that uh, very heavy match. We're getting Elias versus Jeff Hardy. You know what bothers me about this storyline, to be honest, is that they're trying to pick up on the Jeff Hardy and Elias. Jeff Hardy, oh, Jeff Hardy ran over Elias with a drunken hit and run deal on SmackDown in the summer during that just horrific storyline with Sheamus, which the less said about that and the more forgotten about it, the better. And the fact that they're trying to continue with a terrible, terrible storyline is very frustrating. What is interesting, though, about Elias, and you must say this about Elias, is those those reports came out in the week, didn't they? About, um, by all accounts, that WWE, and well, when I say WWE, Vincent Mann, considers Elias to be a main eventer on Raw. Elias is going to be getting the mega push on Monday night, so... Don't be surprised if you see Elias in main event soon on Monday nights because he is uh, considered to be a main eventer on Monday Night Raw. Vince McMahon is a big fan of Elias. I wonder if uh, Jeff Jarrett's watching this one after Elias called him a junkie earlier tonight. That was fun. Because Jeff, Jeff Jarrett rather did not look happy after Elias called him a junkie earlier tonight. So we got Elias singing a, a song right now. But I must say, like, Elias, he's he's switched babyface and heel, it feels like a, a million times at this point, isn't he? He's rivaling the big show with these babyface and heel turns. But what I will say is um, Elias is, is a lot better. A lot better as a heel. I'd much rather have... Elias as a heel as opposed to a babyface because he's just yeah he's just not he's not a he's not a he's not a babyface he's a heel. As we now have Jeff Hardy make his way to the ring with still with the with the old Hardy Boys music. We're going to be get no more words back once we have fans apparently. I wish. I, I, I can't wait to get No More Words back because that, that No More Words entrance with uh, Jeff Hardy is, is iconic and we all want to see that, that entrance back and that is coming back by all accounts if it doesn't we'll be fuming but Jeff Hardy has confirmed that No More Words is coming back so we don't have to worry about that So remember they're saying, of course, this is meant to be playing on the fact that someone ran over Elias and are doing the hit and run. And the police said that the uh, the culprit had, was it red hair and a beard? The culprit is still out there, they're saying. Oh, the culprit is still out there. Expert police work going on in the state of Florida right there. As we've got a coloring out with type to start up here between Jeff Hardy and Elias. This is Elias is officially his first match back since his injury. I believe it is. Kevin says, can NXT be in Survivor Series again this year? I think that is the plan. They showed um they showed a graphic of Survivor Series earlier on during the kickoff show and there was still the same as last year there was the red there was the blue and there was the yellow which says to me that uh, NXT is going to be involved in Survivor Series this year it is interesting what difference a year can make though isn't it because I think if you think about it this time th this time last year they were certainly trying to treat NXT as a third brand weren't they they were trying to treat NXT like a legitimate third brand it was equivalent to Raw and SmackDown. Fast forward a year later, it's developmental again. It is developmental again. They barely acknowledge NXT in comparison to Raw and SmackDown calling it the main roster. It's just, it's developmental again. WWE, like anything, has already given up on it and we're only 12 months in. Now its purpose it serves on Wednesday nights is to take viewers away from AEW Dynamite as opposed to compete with it. It's about hurting it as opposed to winning. Whereas if it moved to Tuesday nights, both brands would 
flourish, but WWE doesn't care about that. As we've got some mat wrestling going on right now between Jeff Hardy and Elias. If you're new to Wrestle News 365, be sure to subscribe. You can do that click in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, wait a few seconds, rather, it'll be at the end of this video. I'm getting confused with my videos. We've done so many today, that's why. We've been doing um, preview videos today with Alan Nassau. We've been doing Bound for Glory Fallout videos, which I've really enjoyed talking about. I mean, who doesn't enjoy talking about Bound for Glory and Impact and WWE? There's so much going on right now, isn't there, when it comes to when it comes to WWE and AEW and uh, Impact for anything for that matter. So you have to you have to say it's absolutely fantastic, very exciting. I mean, we're, we're barely underway tonight. We're barely underway. We've only had, this is our second match of the night, not including the kickoff show, on the main card. Jeff Hardy, here we go. Well, flies off it, the uh, steel steps into the barricade there. As we see Jeff Hardy. He's got... Um, that camera angle there, you could see it. Obviously, Jeff Hardy wears the, uh, what they call them, the stretches in the earlobes there. And Jeff Hardy, well, they count it to 10. He just made it back in the ring. Jeff Hardy wears the stretches in the ears, which leaves these, like, real, like, dangly earlobe deals. And uh, I'll be totally honest, they are, like, horrific to look at. <laughs> they really are, like, horrific to look at. Um... I mean, not, not, you know, no problem if you wear them yourself. Just, they do are a bit funny to look at. And if you're Andy Orton, he likes to put screwdrivers in them. If you're Sami Zayn, he likes to handcuff them or ear cuff them to ladders. So Elias is being vicious with Jeff Hardy, kicking him in the corner right now. Elias going to whip Jeff Hardy off the ropes and a shoulder tackle slash clothesline to Elias there. Elias's lateral press and a two count. It sounds like Tom Phillips. Could you ever see Elias being WWE champion? I, I mean, I wouldn't be totally against it. I'll be totally honest. I think Elias could be WWE champion. Sure, why not? As uh, Elias has got a uh, bit of a headlock on Jeff Hardy right now. But of course, we already have had one Hell in a Cell match tonight. We've got two left to go. We've also got uh, Bailey. We've got Bailey versus Sasha Banks in a Hell in a Cell match for the SmackDown Women's Championship, which I think is going to to main event the show. I think uh, we also have the WWE Championship on the line inside Hell in a Cell too, as Drew McIntyre defends against Randy Orton. That will be happening tonight as well. Jeff Hardy is clapping to try and get. The um, the WWE Thunderdome universe behind him. Can they actually hear the claps inside the Thunderdome? I don't think they can, can they? I think it was originally pitched. They were trying to say that they could hear potentially some of the noise inside the Thunderdome, but I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if they can actually properly hear anything. Is Jeff Hardy he's, uh, fighting back now. Tarmac drop. He's going to go for the uh, heels to the abdomens. Jeff Hardy just going for a splash for a two count. Just going for that little random Jeff Hardy sort of full, smack, full splash like a Ric Flair flop on Elias there. Jeff Hardy, is, to be honest, I mean, Jeff Hardy, what, he's nearly 40 now, I think? It's a miracle, quite frankly, at this point when it comes to Jeff Hardy that he's able to walk, isn't it? Yeah, the amount of stuff he's put his body through, whether it is physically or whether it is you know substances and all that it's incredible bang oh my god Elias just hit a set out power bomb and nearly dropped Jeff Hardy on his head uh, absolutely brutal by uh by Elias there and see a replay here he's got him in an electric chair spins him around into a power bomb but just again nearly stacks him on his neck and his shoulder blades man that looked painful that looked really painful for uh for Jeff Hardy there. But we got a bit of a reverse elbow there from Jeff Hardy. Kick to the face as well. 
we look like we could have a confirmation as to Jeff Hardy's hit the whisper in the wind for a two count. We look like we have a... <laughs> I was going to say we look like we had a confirmation of what the, the match was going to be because we're going to get a match between one member of Retribution and one member of the Hurt Business tonight. But um, <laughs> Reckoning, which is of course Mia Yim has said, give me Shout and Benjamin. Of course, they're best friends in real life. So I got caught. There's a twist of fate by Jeff Hardy. He's going to the top rope. Looks like we're going to see Jeff Hardy go for a swanton bomb. But Elias is rolled to the ring apron. Oh, God. Jeff Hardy, don't do it. He's going to do a swanton onto the ring apron. He's going to roll out the way. Oh, thankfully, Elias is rolled out the way. God. Elias, Jeff Hardy's still standing on the... Uh... Oh, God. Thank God. I thought Jeff Hardy was going to do a swanton off the, uh... <laughs> off the, the ring post onto Jeff Hardy. Elias has got the guitar. Jeff Hardy's got it. Bang! And Jeff Hardy's just smashed the guitar across the back of Elias right there for a disqualification. So Elias is winning this match by disqualification after Jeff Hardy's attacked him with the guitar. Eric says this is a good match. Quick one. It was never going to be as long after the... Uh, it was never going to be as long after the... Um, after the Roman Reigns vs. Jey Uso match as... Jeff Hardy is holding the broken guitar in his hands. Jeff Hardy's just smashing the guitar now as well. So Elias wins on his return back to WWE after injury. But here we go. Elias grabs the guitar first. Jeff Hardy takes it out of his hands and then bang, smashes it on the back of Elias for a disqualification victory for Elias and his first match back uh, after being drafted to Raw. Of course, Elias' new album that they're heavily advertising is coming up tomorrow. The Universal Truth, they're calling it. As we've got Tom Phillips, Byron Saxton and Samoa Joe back on commentary. I think they're talking about the um, the Law and Otis segment. We could be seeing the Money in the Bank briefcase match coming up next as we see a replay of the Law and Otis segment from Friday Night Smackdown this past week. Of course, the judge was John Bradshaw Layfield. You had the bailiff being Farouk slash Ron Simmons. You had the uh, person typing up the notes. Is there a special word for that? Topographer? That was Teddy Long from a Smackdown uh, general manager, Teddy Long. I was hoping they were going to make a match. The punishment for this could be a one-on-one -on -one match with The Undertaker. But uh, instead it looked like JBL was bribed. That's what they went with in the end, didn't they? That like JBL was bribed by The Miz with obviously money or people to bully. And um, instead, instead JBL ruled in favour of The Miz, which has led us to tonight. That means we're going to have Otis versus The Miz with the Money in the Bank briefcase on the line. So do we think we're going to see a switch here? Do we think we could potentially see a switch of the Money in the Bank briefcase tonight? Who knows? Who knows? It was funny because obviously Wrestler's Court back in the day, Wrestler's Court was uh, always the judge was The Undertaker. Now, I don't want to see... You know, The Undertaker and stupid comedy gimmicks. But it would have been interesting because if The Undertaker had appeared in this segment, it would have been very obvious that he is legitimately retired. <laughs> because there's no coming back from that. Did they ever come back to actually who was uh, doing those dun-dun bangs as well during that segment? Because it looked like there was a joke and they just never paid it off. But, I mean, do we really think at this point, do we really think at this point that Owens can be universal champion? I don't think so. I don't think so. I've pretty much shown the entirety of this segment. But they're, they're pretty much showing the uh, entirety of this segment, hyping up this or explaining why we've got this Otis versus Miz match tonight. So I'm guessing that's next. 
or they're just showing out for the sake of it. Oh, we've got Caleb Braxton. We've got Caleb Braxton uh, doing an interview with Otis and Tucker. Heavy Machinery, even though they're on separate brands, remember, they're on separate brands, but they're still together because the brand split means nothing. The brand split means nothing at all. It means absolutely nothing. A brand split is, you know... So Otis is holding two briefcases. He's holding the Money in the Bank briefcase. He's also holding his lunchbox because Otis, remember, the gimmick is that Otis is a big fat man and Vincent Man finds that absolutely hilarious. So, it's just, well, it's, it's it, the gimmick that WWE, this revolutionary genius gimmick that WWE is trying to dream up for Otis is that he's Chris Farley. But here we go. We're going to have Otis versus The Miz with the winner getting the uh, Money in the Bank contract. The Money in the Bank contract is on the line. As the, uh, as the sign says right there, the graphic. As The Miz makes his way to the ring right there. The Miz getting his, uh, his pyro. As it's going to be for the Money in the Bank briefcase. The Money in the Bank contract just feels very... I don't know. It just feels very strange at this point, doesn't it? Like it, Not like it used to. You know, the Money in the Bank... I always think about the right, you know, you, you go back to the original, but you go back to Edge when he held the Money in the Bank briefcase. It felt like it meant something. You know what I mean? It felt like a big deal. And it just, I don't know if it just, it just doesn't feel like that at the moment, does it? So we've got Michael Cole and Corey Graves at this point talking about Skittles, because why not? But what are we thinking of uh, WWE Hell in a Cell so far? What are we thinking about um, how this is played out so far? This is, is the first match was, I mean, uh, brilliant, absolutely sensational. Second match, I mean, how do you follow that? To be honest, when it comes to Elias and Jeff Hardy, how do you follow that Roman Reigns match? Oh, it says new entrance music. Oh God. Otis has new entrance music, and uh, this is uh, odd. So it's only ever, they've just mentioned this on commentary actually. It's a bit of a, bit of a trivia for you guys. The Money in the Bank contract has only ever been lost once during a, uh, during a match. That, of course, was Edge winning the Money in the Bank contract from Mr. Kennedy in 2007. Mr. Kennedy won the Money in the Bank briefcase at WrestleMania 23. They thought he had torn his triceps. He hadn't. It was bruised. And Edge won the Money in the Bank briefcase on Raw, cashed it in on SmackDown, and became the World Heavyweight Champion, cashed it in on The Undertaker. That was the rise of Edge on SmackDown in 2007, 2008. As the match kicks off right now between The Miz... And Otis for the Money in the Bank briefcase. So could we see the Money in the Bank briefcase change hands right now? Personally, I don't think they will because I think Vincent Mann absolutely loves Otis. We've just seen as well that Otis has got new entrance music. So it's a sign that you know the Otis push is here to stay. As Otis hits a, uh, a body slam on The Miz. One thing you can't deny about Otis is that he's a phenomenal athlete. He is absolutely phenomenal athlete. He really is. Jawbreaker by the Miz there. And uh, Otis as well, in terms of like his power, his power is, is pretty incredible. It's unbelievable as well. So Otis is just standing on the chest of the Miz right now. As Otis is shouting, oh yeah, like the, 
like that. Was it what's it called? The red guy in the the jug thing. The Miz is going for a drop kick. No misses though. And Otis uh, and Miz are brawling on the outside right now. Otis is throwing the Miz into the uh, the announce table. They're back in the ring now. Certainly two. Oh, John Morrison's up on the apron. Distracting Otis. And the Miz is now going for a DDT and hits it. Bang. John Morrison, to be honest, should be the one that gets the money in the bank briefcase if they were going to switch it. But I don't think they will. I think Otis is going to win this one. Once again, though, how do you... Um, it's almost like these two matches are to come down from that opening having the sound match with Roman Reigns and, and Jey Uso. It was that good that they're having to sort of come down a bit from it now as John Morrison gets involved once again. Eric says, Miz, go. Obviously cheering on the Miz here in this match. But we've still got two more Hell in a Cell matches to come tonight. I would assume, given the matches we have left. I mean, is that, I mean, we've got two matches left, technically, haven't we? This is the third match of the evening. We've got five and now it's actually got three more matches left. Because we've got the uh, Retribution, person from Retribution versus person from the Hurt Business. We've got that match left. So after this match, we only have three matches left. So I would assume that we probably have... A Hell in a Cell match next. I would assume for the WWE Championship. Following that, we have a member of the Hurt Business versus a member of Retribution. Then our main event, I think, will be for the SmackDown Women's Championship inside Hell in a Cell, which would be Bailey versus Sasha Banks. I think that's what we're going to get tonight. As Miz has a sleeper hold in on Otis right now. As, of course, remember the Money in the Bank briefcase contract is on the line. Oh, it's his Otising up like Hulk Hogan. Hogan. Oh, my God. What a boot to the face by the Miz. Man. That's a hell of a big boot <laughs> by the Miz right there. Hell of a big boot onto Otis. Of course, remember as well, you have to remember that the Miz has been Mr. Money in the Bank before. Won the Money in the Bank briefcase, I believe it was at 2010. 2010? Yeah, 2010, and then cashed it in. In uh, cashed it in later that year in November. Oh no, was it? When did he win that then? It was 2010. But then did he cash it in in 2011? No, he cashed it in in 2010. I'm just having a conversation with myself at this point. He won it in 2010, in like May or July of 2010, and then cashed it in in November of 2010. That's right. As the Miz is trying to kick Otis, but Otis is Otising up. Here we go. He's doing his best, Hulk Hogan. Otis is Otising up. Couple of close lines, shoulder tackles to the Miz. Otis is hitting the ropes. Goes for a clothesline. I mean, again, you, you, you don't realise the strength of this guy. He is ridiculously strong. He really is. And he hits a flapjack by uh, Otis to the Miz. Because I think every move he has has to involve food. They've probably said that to him. They've gone, go on an old SmackDown vs. Raw WWE 2K game. Go on to create a wrestler mode. Find every move that involves food. Flapjack. Pancake. I don't think of any more. If you can think of any more, let me know in the, the comment section or the live chat. And Otis has just thrown the Miz into the barricade there. Morris had attempted to get involved and Otis just sort of intimidated him away. As he's throwing uh, Miz back in the ring. It's incredible because... Oh, Miz just hits a big boot to Otis. It's incredible because you, it, when Miz, when Otis does these moves to the Miz, it doesn't look like he's actually expending any energy at all. He's just that strong. 
John Morrison had the briefcase. He looked like he was just about to hit the Miz, but the referee caught him. And uh, the referee, she has just thrown the, uh, John Morrison out of the match. Now the Miz has no backup as John Morrison has been thrown out of the arena. Otis has rolled up the Miz. He kicks out. Oh, discus clothesline, man. Right on the Miz. And the Miz kicks out. I thought that might have been it. What I will say, and maybe this is the heel in me at this point, is that where John Morrison dropped that briefcase, it's right by Tucker. Perfect if he was going to turn his back on the mit on Otis. Like he just did. Otis just hit... Tucker just hit Otis with the briefcase. Like I just said, I just called it and he did it. Tucker just turned his back on Otis. He hit him with the briefcase. Miz is in the cover, he's going to win it. And Miz is Mr. Money in the Bank. Miz has won the Money in the Bank briefcase and he is the new Money in the Bank contract holder. The Miz has stolen the Money in the Bank briefcase. My oh my. I didn't see that coming. I said I thought that Otis would retain. But I did say, I did say when that happened, I said that John Morrison has just dropped the Money in the Bank briefcase right at the feet of Tucker. It's right there, just in case for him to turn on Otis and Tucker has turned his back on Otis and we now have a new Mr. Money in the Bank, that man being The Miz. The Miz is new Mr. Money in the Bank. My, oh my. Wow. So could, could The Miz become a WWE champion for the second time in his career? The opportunity is there. My gut instinct would say no. <laughs> my gut instinct would say no that he wouldn't. But um, there we go. Tucker has just turned his back. It was like the slowest. It was like the slowest shot, by the way. Otis hung on the second rope for about a million years. And then Tucker hit him with the briefcase. But Tucker has turned heel. He's turned on Otis. And Miz is the new Mr. Money in the bank. Wow. Now, once again, does this mean that The Miz is going to cash in successfully and become the WWE champion? I don't think so. But it does go to show that I think WWE realized that putting the Money in the Bank briefcase on Otis was a mistake. It goes to show that putting the title on him was obviously a mistake that they probably shouldn't have made. They probably shouldn't have made. But what's interesting, though, is that this sets up a feud between Otis and Tucker. It's great that they've just been drafted to different brands, though. Again, because the brand split doesn't matter. But we've got we've got a new Mister Money in the Bank. This is this is craziness. This is craziness. They've realised they obviously made a mistake when it comes to Otis being Mister Money in the Bank. They realised that he wasn't world champion material, nothing against Otis, but it obviously is the case that Otis isn't money, isn't uh, world champion material. Back in May, when the, 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 the briefcase was won by Otis, maybe he did have a shot, but they've realized their mistake. The Money in the Bank briefcase is now on The Miz. Does this mean that The Miz is going to become WWE champion? My gut instinct already tells me no, but anything can change. I think it's more likely that The Miz would become WWE champion than someone like Otis. But this is this is this is this is surprising because I didn't think they would do it because I felt that Vince McMahon was so stubborn that he wouldn't have he wouldn't have uh, go back on his go back on what his decision was to have Otis become Mister Money in the Bank. But now we have an interview with the Miz and Kayla Braxton and John Morrison, as Miz is the new Mister Money in the Bank. You can thank JBL for this. He bribed. He bribed uh, the judge, the Miz did. He bribed JB out, and now we have the Miz being Mr. Money in the Bank. Potentially, we could have another Miz WWE Championship reign in the future. Interesting, interesting. But there is so much to break down from that, really, isn't there? You've got, obviously, the Miz becoming Mr. Money in the Bank. He could become the WWE Champion. 
You've got the Otis feud now with Tucker, even though they're on different brands. How does that work? You've got WWE essentially admitting their mistake that they shouldn't have given Otis the Money in the Bank briefcase because he's not uh, WWE Championship or Universal Championship material. He's not at that level. So uh, what a what a crazy what a crazy match. What a crazy storyline. The Money in the Bank briefcase is just here we go. Tucker's backstage as well with the Miz. He's inter interrupting this interview. They've asked him why he's doing this. Tucker's giving the classic heel promo, the classic heel breakup promo. I was the workhorse. I was supposed to be the winner. I was the workhorse. I did all the work. I did everything for that man. Here we go. The classic, the classic heel breakup promo is being done by Tucker. Tucky. Backstage right now. It's interesting though when it comes to Tucker because I think a lot of people felt that once he once he got drafted to Raw, that was his career over, pretty much. Now, this heel turn, it might give him something to do. Look, I'm trying to look at positives here. Maybe this this is the best thing for him. Maybe this gives him a bit of personality. Maybe this gives him something to do. Cause he's doing the uh he's doing the classic, it's all about me, it's all about here we go, oh, this is gonna attack him. Oh, this is brawling with Tucker backstage already. Maybe this is the best thing for Otis as well. Maybe this makes Otis serious. But Otis is brawling with Tucker backstage. Brian says, is Russo booking this pay-per-view? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not. You know what? I think it's the right call. I think it's the right call. I do think it's the right call to switch the money in the bank briefcase. I think you'll, find, you'll struggle to find people that would disagree with you there. This is the right call to have Otis no longer be money in the bank holder because he's not... I don't want to say he's not good enough to be um, Universal Champion, but it wasn't the right call. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, and it wasn't the right call. We've got a we've got a championship match next, and unfortunately, Bailey versus Sasha Banks is not the main event. I thought it would be the main event, but it looks like the next Hell in a Cell match will be for the SmackDown Women's Championship as Bailey is going to defend against Sasha Banks, which means that our main event for tonight is going to be for the WWE Championship inside Hell in a Cell between Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. Uh, what a what a strange pay per view this has been. What I will say is um, newsworthy, very newsworthy, considering the opening match, which I thought was absolute genius. I thought Roman Reigns was absolutely fantastic. We then had uh, Jeff Hardy versus Elias. Nothing really happened there. We had Otis versus The Miz, and we have a new Mister Money in the Bank in The Miz, which is I mean massive story potentially. Um, the Miz potentially has a WWE Championship match in his hands right there. So how um, interesting could that be? Curious, actually. I'm going to call this here because I've called a couple of things tonight. I called before it happened, potentially Raymond Reigns attacking Jimmy Uso to make Jay quit. I called as soon as I saw it that potentially Tucker could hit Otis with a Money in the Bank. Let's go three for three right now because... If the main event is for the WWE Championship inside Hell in a Cell and The Miz has just won the Money in the Bank briefcase tonight, then potentially, hear me out, potentially, could we have Drew McIntyre maybe defeat Randy Orton for the WWE Championship tonight? And then as they're raising the cage, as they're raising the cell structure, you then hear The Miz's entrance music plays as he attempts to cash in on the WWE Champion, whether it is Drew McIntyre, potentially Drew McIntyre, or Randy Orton. If it's Randy Orton, it is a repeat of nine years ago, because remember, The Miz cashed in on Randy Orton to become the WWE Champion nine years ago. Could we see the same fate tonight, or could The Miz cash in on Drew McIntyre tonight? All that could happen because the main event is for the WWE Championship inside Hell in a Cell. Three for three. All I'm saying, three for three. As we've got a promo right now for the Sasha Banks and Bailey match that is coming up next. So what do we all think of that? What if that is an absolute newsworthy event? I'm still I'm still um, digesting that result. I'm still digesting that we have a new Mr. Money in the Bank in the Miz. I'm still digesting that Tucker has turned on Otis, and Tucker has cut the evil heel promo. Once you split up from your tag team partner, that it's all about me and. They can't do nothing without me and all this kind of stuff. 
But I think the fact that the main event now is for the WWE Championship, the main event is the WWE Championship Hell in a Cell match, I think is significant because I think that might tie in to the fact that The Miz has just won the Money in the Bank briefcase, given that The Miz is on Monday Night Raw now too. And the Monday Night Raw World Championship is main eventing the show. How are we, uh, what do we think about that? If you enjoyed that Otis is no longer Mr. Money in the Bank and you enjoyed that The Miz is now Mr. Money in the Bank, be sure to smash a like on the video. If you uh, haven't subscribed to Wrestle News 365 yet, you can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Uh, we have recently hit over 1,000 subscribers. We'll be doing a lot more live watch-alongs in the upcoming weeks. So if you subscribe now, you won't miss a future watch-along when we go live. 2FFA on Yo Head says, I think Sasha is going to win. I mean, anything could happen tonight. I, I said that I felt Bailey would retain here, but... Um, I, the story the story would suggest that Sasha would win. I think the interesting thing is, of course, that Sasha Banks has never won a uh, a Money in the Bank ladder match. A Money in the Bank, a Money in the Bank on the brain. Sasha Banks has never won a Hell in the Cell match. She's appeared in two, but she's never won a Hell in the Cell match. Could this be the one that she finally wins? This is the. Uh, the third Hell in a Cell match, of course, in WWE history. Sasha Banks has competed in every Hell in a Cell match. She competed in the first one against Charlotte Flair. She lost. She competed in the second one last year against Becky Lynch. She lost. She's competing in the third tonight against Bayley. Will she win? I say no. I say no. She's also never won the SmackDown Women's Championship in her career. So is this going to be a night of first for Sasha Banks? Is she going to win her first Hell in a Cell match on the third attempt? And is she going to become the SmackDown Women's Champion for the first time in her career? I don't think so. I just, I just, I think Bailey's going to retain. I've got a feeling that Bailey's going to retain this one. Although what I suppose is going the way of Sasha Banks is that Sasha Banks is appearing in season two of The Mandalorian. That is going to be on Disney Plus in the next few weeks. I know some people might not be fans of Star Wars and I know some people might um, not watch that. But what is important, I suppose, is that she will be in the mainstream. She will be in the media. People will be talking about Sasha Banks. Would WWE want Sasha Banks to be one of their women's champions at a time that she's very much being spoken about on social media and in the media? I think maybe. Maybe. As Bailey is about to make her entrance right now. Bailey, by the way, has um, some absolutely incredible records um, as the SmackDown Women's Champion. She has held the SmackDown Women's Championship for 380 days. Obviously, she's got a gap between two SmackDown Women's Championship reigns of about a week. In reality, she's been champion pretty much for like 500, 600 days. It's absolutely incredible. But this match is going to be this match is going to be interesting. This match is certainly the sleeper for the match of the show, perhaps. But also, you have to consider as well as how fantastic that Roman Reigns match was. I mean, talk about following great matches. I think uh, Elias and Jeff Hardy struggled to follow that absolutely incredible opening match from Roman Reigns, and uh, now Sasha Banks and Bailey have to follow the also incredible match from Reigns earlier. What is going to be the best Sal match tonight? Because there's going to be three absolutely incredible ones, I think. Bailey has got the uh, the steel chair with her that she used to attack Sasha Banks as well. So this one is going to be good. This one is going to be very, very interesting, no doubt, between Sasha Banks and Bailey. Bailey has gone a bit full uh, Balls Mahoney and Axel Rotten because she spray painted on that chair as well. Remember when Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney used to do that for ECW? They used to spray paint like ECW or Mind Your Head or stuff like that on there. It was fantastic. But this isn't like the first Hell in a Cell match of the night. The first Hell in a Cell match was also a an I Quit match. It turned into a strap match at the same time. This is just a regular, I say regular, Hell in a Cell match. I still find it incredible that earlier tonight they actually sort of attempted to stomp 
the Hell in the Cell match for the third year in a row. If the agents and referees had their way, they would have uh, changed that match into a no contest again. Which would have been ridiculous if they had pulled that off. Bailey rocking some new gear as well tonight, by the way. This sort of black and different gear by Bailey is uh, certainly interesting as the Hell in a Cell is about to be lowered right now. I wish they had the, you know, the ominous Hell in a Cell music. There we go. Sasha Banks just sort of drop kicked Bailey and Bailey's chair has flown under the Hell in a Cell as it's being lowered, so Bailey doesn't have the steel chair available for use. And the bow is rung and we are underway. There is no chair involved. That was a nice spot. I like that. This is gonna be good. Sasha Banks and Bailey SmackDown Women's Championship on the line. This is going to be good. Settle back and enjoy this one. In fairness, I mean, they're going on. Oh, Bailey doesn't have a special weapon to use. I mean, this is a WWE ring. I'm pretty sure there's probably a million steel chairs underneath the ring right now. <laughs> As opposed to, oh, I, lo I lost the one that flew under the cage. Oh, wait, there's 500 underneath the ring apron. I think we saw a little glimpse there. There was a, the ring apron lifted slightly, and I don't know about you, but I noticed at least like five or six kendo sticks. Whether that's for this match or whether that's for the Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre match later tonight, we'll have to wait and see. As uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey stand off this match, Bailey's uh, Sasha Banks drivers on the top rope. Sasha Banks is going to go for a looks like a head scissors there, or oh, she's transitioned into a back into the. Bank statement. She's not going to tap out this early, surely, but she is arching back on the back of Bailey right now. You think of the matches. Think of the matches that these two have had. These two have had in NXT. Arguably, I would put it up there against any NXT takeover match in history. I know some people will say some of the more modern takeover matches are better, but for me. Oh, as Bailey throws Banks into the Hell in a the Cell there. For me, the uh, one of the best uh, takeover matches in history is the match at TakeOver Brooklyn. Sasha Banks versus Bailey. You'll struggle to find a better one. You'll struggle to find a better one. As Bailey's got control of this one right now. Uh, after throwing Sasha Banks into the Hell in a Cell on a couple of occasions there. Of course, their match at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn was under different circumstances because in that match, uh, yeah, Sasha Banks was the heel and the champion, whereas in this match, Bailey is the heel and the champion. So certainly roles reversed, but there are the kendo sticks that I mentioned. Bailey went to use the kendo stick, but uh, Sasha Banks grabbed it and then she flung it out the cage through the gap. Bailey's just elbowed Sasha Banks in the throat. And she's going to use the kendo stick again, but Sasha Banks has caught it and a knee to the face. Brian says, I fear for Sasha in Hell in the Cell. We all remember the botches and concussions in the Charlotte match. Well, Sasha Banks, you know, she puts it all on the line. She puts it all on the line, there's no doubt. What I will say is that that uh little sequence they had at the start of the match when it was transitioned into the bank statement that was pretty pretty damn incredible i must say that was awesome sasha banks is getting a table out now i am the table indeed because she's getting out a table as apparently hell in a cell what's hashtag h-i-a-c is trending number one in the united states right now a lot of people talking about it probably a lot of people talking about the fact that uh, Otis is no longer Mr. Money in the Bank and The Miz is Mr. Money in the Bank. Even though Sasha Banks got the table out, she is now on the floor. And Bailey's looking to uh, move this table right now. So it looks like we might get a table bump here. Oof. As Banks is shoving Bailey into the Hell in the Cell of the uh, the table right now, bang! Oh, 
Oh. Banks then just used the... Uh, that was awesome. Banks used the, the table as a ramp to hit Bailey with a Meteora into the Hell in a Cell structure. That was awesome. She's gone to the top rope now and another Meteora to Bailey in the ring. And Bailey kicks out at two. Nice spot, though. I remember last year during the Hell in a Cell match that Sasha Banks had with Becky Lynch, which actually opened the show and was fantastic, by the way. Some of the unique spots in that match were awesome. Um, Bailey hit uh, Bailey. Back, Sasha Banks hit a meteora on Becky Lynch in that match and uh, threw a table, and that was fantastic. They also had some absolutely fantastic spots last year in the Hell in the Cell. Sasha Banks is uh, kind of the queen of the Hell in the Cell matches. She really is. Obviously, she's been in the most, and last year I thought her her match with Becky Lynch inside Hell in the Cell was thought was absolutely fantastic. I really did. It was creative. They had the spot with the uh, the steel chair and the kendo stick wedged into the side of the cell. That match is there. It was it was awesome. Sasha Banks went to the outside of the ring there. And she kind of landed on the table a bit awkwardly there. That was a nasty landing for Sasha Banks. And here we go. Bailey's got another steel chair. This was a, this was my point a minute ago. <laughs> they were going on. Saying, oh, she's just lost her steel chair. I can't believe she's lost her steel chair. I, I'm pretty sure there's probably like a million underneath the ring. You don't have to worry about that. Bailey's going to use a steel chair. Sasha moves out the way. She's sliding under the table. Now she's under the table. She's kicked the table into the face of Bailey. That was a cool spot. Oof. She hits another meteora onto Bailey into Hal Nassau, but Banks landed sort of tailbone first onto the mat there. That hurt. That looked like that was painful. Brian says it's only almost 1 a.m. Uh, bed early for us. I know. I know this is great. People don't understand this. With uh, the UK fans, obviously, you won't understand. And maybe depending on where you watch this across the world. But um, usually this time, if we were about, I don't know, nearly two hours into a pay-per-view, we'd be looking at it being sort of 2, 3 a.m. So thumbs up. This, is, this, is, this could be an early night. We might actually sleep tonight in the UK. Can you believe that? I wonder what to do with myself. As Bailey is uh, putting the chair back in the ring. Let's double check how many subscribers we've got right now. If you are new to the channel. Oh, she's Bailey goes to throw Sasha Banks into the side of the cage. She scales the sow. And Bailey's going to go and throw. Oof. Basically, she went to throw Bailey. Uh, she went to throw Sasha Banks into the ring. Banks counted into a bit of a hurricane rana. Used the rana to put Bailey into the cell. It sounds as complicated as it looked. It was a bit sloppy. So we're currently on bang on 1,050 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who has newly subscribed to the channel. If you are new, please subscribe to WrestleNews 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. We'll be doing a lot more watch alongs and live streams and stuff like that in the coming weeks. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you're enjoying this pay-per-view so far, if you're enjoying this match between Sasha Banks and Bailey, smash a like on the like button as well. And here we go. I mentioned that I mentioned that Sasha Banks did this last year. She did this almost the very same spot. She is wedging a kendo stick into the hell in the south through the steel ring steps. She uh, loves these kendo sticks inside Hell in the South. She did it with Becky Lynch last year. She's doing it with Bailey right now. Going to suit, try attempt to suplex her right through it. Bailey's reverse. She's going to try and do it instead. She's attempt to suplex her, but now Sasha Banks is on the ring apron. One of the kendo sticks has been knocked out. Oh, one of the kendo sticks fell out, and Bailey. Sort of hit a, a, a drop toe hold version, and ba and Sasha Banks went through the kendo stick that was wedged between the sow and the uh, the steel steps, and now Sasha Banks is selling the throat and neck injury that she had. They're showing it again, drop toe hold yet, yeah, and she goes through the kendo stick that was wedged between the sow and the steel steps. This was uh... so Bailey is wedging it up again, uh, uh, the one that fell out anyway. Lucky says Sasha will win. If you think that uh, Sasha is going to become the new SmackDown Women's Champion, be sure to put it in the live chat. And here we go. Bailey is attempting to do the same as Sasha and basically wedge the kendo sticks into the cell. Here we go. She's going to do a... Oh. 
did a bit of a hangman's catapult. Bailey does a hangman's catapult. Sasha Banks goes next slash throat first into the kendo sticks wedged between the cell and the steel steps. Brutal. Cool, innovative stuff, though. It's hard. I mean, there have been so many Hell in the Sound matches. There have to be at this point, like, if I was to guess in WWE history, maybe maybe 40, maybe even more than that, maybe even more than 40 Hell in the Sound matches. There have been a lot. There have been certainly a lot throughout WWE history. So it ain't easy to be innovative. It ain't easy to do new stuff, try different stuff. So to do uh, to do different and unique stuff, you've got to give credit to these two right now. As Sasha Banks and Bailey are back in the ring now, Bailey's working over Sasha Banks. I like the fact that they're 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 working with the story here. The story is that Sasha Banks does have an injured neck from the attacks by Bailey. Of course, when Bailey did the big attack and the big turn on Sasha Banks, she did the pilmanizer on the neck. She put Sasha Banks' neck through the chair, stamped on the chair. And they've been selling the neck injury over the last few weeks, haven't they? And they're certainly playing this up now by having uh, Bailey work on the neck of Sasha Banks. So I like that. That is a nice play on the uh, on the on what would be the storyline injuries right now. That's called logic. That's called psychology. Bailey's now talking trash. So she's going to break her neck, or she's going to go for a sort of. Belly to back suplex, Saido suplex on the apron there, that would have been nasty. Here we go. Oh my god. Bailey um, went for the Saido suplex. Sasha Banks counters, goes for a sunset flip, power bomb. Power bombs Bailey into the Hell in a Cell. I mean, Bailey hits her head here. Whiplash. Oh my god. Her head and sort of arms and shoulders, she whiplashes the hell out of the uh, side of Hell in a Cell there. That was absolutely brutal. It's going to get a two count though, and Bailey kicks out. That was a brutal sunset flip bomb. I tell you who did the best ever sunset flip bomb was Eddie Guerrero. There was a match with Edge, I think a ladder match on SmackDown. I want to say it's 2002, and uh, Edge, uh, Eddie Guerrero does a sunset flip power bomb onto Edge, and it was incredible, unbelievable. Oh my god. So Sasha Banks has attempted to hit the uh, bank, to use the bank statement on Bailey using the steel chair as a weapon. Bailey manages to wriggle out and she just sort of drops Sasha Banks face first onto the steel chair there, and her face just, I mean, ricochets off of it. That looked brutal. They're going to show a replay here. So Bailey escapes, uses Sasha Banks's foot to sort of trip her up, and she hits her face face first, legitimately on the on the steps. I wouldn't be surprised she has a bloody mouth there. Or broken teeth. As Bailey's wedged a uh, a chair there into between the turnbuckles. What are we thinking of this match so far? This is going to be um, this is going to be interesting. She attempted to throw Banks into the steel st steel chair there. She slid under though. Oh, Banks has just drove Bailey into the into the steel chair there. Oh my God. Bailey just there, I talked about sort of sunset flip power bombs. Bailey just hit one of her own, a sunset flip power bomb and Sasha Banks hits the back of her head on the steel chair that was wedged in the corner. My God, I mean, that is concussion city. Here we go, we're gonna see it again. Sunset flip, oh my God. Sasha Banks just launches herself back of the head straight into the steel chair there, man. Bailey's gonna go up to the top rope though. She's gonna go for her elbow drop, hits it. Banks kicks out at two though. Man, that spot, back of the head into the steel steel chair. They're gonna show it again here. My god. Whew. I mean again, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if um if Sasha Banks has a concussion there. Because that looks that looks rough. 
That looks really rough. Here we go, though. Sasha Banks has recovered. She's going to go for the bank statement. She's got it locked in. Now, should rope breaks count in this match? Because I don't think they should. It's Hal in the Sal. There we go. They shouldn't. There we go. Bailey does reach for the ropes, but you can't break it because rope breaks don't count. Bailey instead has slid outside of the ring, and she's wedging. There we go. She's tied Sasha Banks up in the ring apron there. Shades of Fit Finley. Oof. Bailey just shoves Sasha Banks' face into the steel ring beam there. Some of the creativity in this match has been incredible, really. Using the uh, kendo stick now to the back of Sasha Banks. There's Bailey. She's going to look for something else now. More kendo sticks. I told you this is matches are full of kendo sticks. She's got duct tape now. Bailey's going to go for um, duct tape. <laughs> Bailey, she's trying to get. Uh, she's trying to start off the duct tape there. She's struggling to get the duct tape started. She's like me. She's got no nails. She's trying to pick it pick it out and uh she's trying to use her teeth instead and she says to the she says to the referee i'm so sweaty can you get this started for me <laughs> and he says no i can't <laughs> that's why bailey's so great because if that was me if i couldn't get that started i'd be panicking so much going, oh my god i can't get the duct tape started but she's she's tied together two kendo sticks with some duct tape here She's tied it up so much that the uh, she's wedged the kendo stick between the cell and between the steel rings uh, between the support beam of the ring. And I'm not sure what she intends to do there because it looks it looks pretty awful. Oh, she nearly tripped on it. <laughs> Bailey. So she's trying to set up two kendo sticks there and wedging between the cell and the and the ring. And it doesn't look great, I'll be totally honest. She then, to get back in the ring, nearly stepped on it. Sasha Banks has now used a fire extinguisher in the face of Bailey. The, uh, the kendo sticks certainly here are kind of going into business for themselves, to be honest. They've got a mind of their own. Bailey goes to grab, grab her steel chair, though, but she can't see because of the uh, fire extinguisher. Sasha Banks grabbed it. How did that, how did that chair get back? I, was, I wonder how, <laughs> how that got back there. But Sasha Banks is throwing Bailey into the Hal in the Cell there. Of course, this is the second Hal in the Cell match of the night. We've got one more left, which is Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. And Sasha Banks is just beating the hell out of Bailey now. She's showing that the Bailey is nothing without Sasha Banks. She's throwing Bailey once again into the side of Hal in the Cell and another Meteora. And knees to the face, kicks to the face. I mean, Sasha Banks is going off on Bailey right now. Sasha Banks is looking under the ring for another, another weapon here. He's got another kendo stick. Are they are they actually going to come back to whatever that setup was by Bailey by putting the kendo stick? into the Hell in the Cell with the with the ring there because it looks just, if they don't come back to it that was just obviously a rest spot or a spot for a distraction spot so Sasha Banks could get the 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 fire extinguisher Sasha Banks now is using the kendo stick on Bailey and is really going at it using that kendo stick on uh, on Bailey right now she's beating the house she's being relentless 
as Michael Cole was saying, using this kendo stick, attacking Bailey. Sasha Banks is looking like she's going to cry. She's going to join Roman Reigns in crying on pay-per-view tonight. Here we go, Sasha Banks, what she's setting up for. Bailey looks to be uh, out of it in the ring right now. Here we go, this is this is going to be a motion here. Bailey's crawling towards the steel chair. She's crawling, crawling towards her trusty steel chair. She's grabbed it, but she, uh, she kind of knows it's over because Banks has just kicked Bailey square in the face. And Banks is going to go to the top rope. Shades of Eddie Guerrero. She's going to go for a frog splash. Here we go. Frog splash. Oh, but Bailey had the chair on her. She used the chair to protect herself. To be honest, if you're Sasha Banks there, what on earth are you doing? You had Bailey for the for the Pete in there, and then you've uh, gone for a frog splash, and Bailey's just used a steel chair to protect herself. But you notice that all of these all of these Hell in the Cell matches so far have all kind of told a bit of a different story here, haven't they? In reality, you had uh, the Roman Reigns J Uso Hell in the Cell match was certainly different. It had the strap. It was I Quit match. It was more about storytelling and less about the moves, more about the emotion. Whereas this one's a bit more creative in some of the maneuvers. We've had a, I think we've had a quota of kendo sticks for the evening. But there's been more innovative offense in this one. And yes, there has been a bit of story to... Oh my God. Bailey has just sent Sasha Banks face first onto the outside. Oh my God. It was sort of a version of EC3 sort of 1% a deal. They're going to show it again here. My God. On the outside. Man, that was brutal. Absolutely brutal. That was ridiculous. Sasha Banks looks to be out. Bailey looks to be going for yet another weapon. Oh my god, she's got a ladder. Here we go. We're going to get something serious now because the ladder's in play. What's Bailey going to do here with a ladder? A lot of just mean crazy spots in professional wrestling. Very rarely do you just use the ladder as a weapon. Some of the best ladder matches have. I think Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels is a great example of a ladder match where they use it as a weapon more or less so as a, a stuff for high spots. But it looks like we're going to get some crazy innovative offense again because Bailey is setting something up here. She's got two steel chairs and she is laid a ladder across two steel chairs in the ring we are going to see something pretty pretty crazy here i think as bailey has set something up pretty unique in the ring sasha banks is fighting back here we go oh she just dropped sasha banks face first on the ladder there Sasha Banks is sort of curled up like a pretzel there in the middle of the ring. Bang. They showed the replay of Sasha Banks being dropped onto the ladder face first. What a great match this has been. They said it's been so different to the first cell match. This has been very unique, very innovative, very unique offense, different um, outside the box thinking. Here we go. What's going on here? Bailey is spray painting Sasha Banks at this point. Bailey has just spray painted Sasha Banks. Now she's got the the steel chair, which has been spray painted on. The X marks the spot. Bailey is going up to the top rope as Sasha Banks is laying prone across a ladder across two steel chairs. Sasha Banks moves out the way though, and Sasha Banks moved out the way. Oof! Sasha Banks then used the ladder as a bit of a platform to hit the meteora. Bailey's in trouble. Oh my god. Bailey to belly onto the ladder of Bailey. But Bailey kicks out. That was nice. 
There was a nice sequence there as uh, Sasha Banks hit the Bailey to belly on the ladder, using Bailey's own finishing maneuver onto the ladder. But got a two count, nice false finish there. You see, you hit the Meteora, and then she transitions into the Bailey to belly onto the ladder, which was on the floor. I mean, it was a horrible Bailey to belly, to be honest. It was more of a judo throw. If anything, more painful than your traditional Bailey to belly. There was no height, it was just a vicious sort of hip toss. That's got to hurt. Sasha Banks doesn't look happy now. She's throwing all kinds of stuff over the sow. She's throwing steel chairs out the way. She's throwing ladders around. She looks beat up to how. So does Bailey. She went for the bank statement again, but Bailey's rolled through and oh my god. Knee to the face. Here we go. Bailey to belly of her own. Bailey to belly to Sasha Banks. But Sasha Banks is kicked out. Close near fall. I tell you what, Sasha Banks sells the Bailey to belly so well, doesn't she? Awesome. I think Bailey's facial reactions so far have been absolutely brilliant too. What an incredible match this has been. Oof, and now Bailey's using the steel chair on the back of Sasha Banks, and again twice. Kind of pulling back on those steel chair shots, though, though I must say. I want to snug up on those a bit. Some of the uh, storytelling and reactions here from both competitors is absolutely fantastic, by the way. Bailey is uh, selling these steel chair shots so well, and sort of the reaction to him. Ballot. <laughs> Ballot. Sasha Banks, oh, here we go. She's going to go for a Bailey to Bailey using it. But Sasha Banks has transitioned through into a bank statement. She's going to use the bank statement. She's got the steel chair around the neck of Bailey and she's got the bank statement locked in. And now she's kicking the chair, sort of closing the lip of it. And Bailey's tapped out. And we have a new SmackDown Women's Champion. Sasha Banks is the new SmackDown Women's Champion. She used the steel chair to lock in the bank statement. She trapped Bailey's head in between the lip of the chair and stamped on it. Not only is she using the chair to sort of choke her out and tap her out, but she's uh, but she was shutting it on her head as well on her neck. And we have a new SmackDown Women's Champion in Sasha Banks. What a fantastic match that was! Absolutely superb, and we have a new SmackDown Women's Champion. I said going into this match, my predictions are terrible. So going into this match, that I felt that. Sasha Banks wouldn't win, but Sasha Banks has finally won a, a Hell in a Cell match on the third attempt. She's finally won the SmackDown Women's Championship. Bailey's historic SmackDown Women's Championship reign is now over. A 380 day, uh, 80 day Women's Championship reign is now over. What a fantastic match between Bailey and Sasha Banks there. And now Sasha Banks, she has won every championship there is to win in WWE. She has won the Raw Women's Championship. She has won the SmackDown Women's Championship. She has won the NXT Women's Championship. She has won the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. Sasha Banks is the new SmackDown Women's Champion after defeating Bayley, winning the SmackDown Women's Championship for the first time in her career, winning a Hell in a Cell match for the first time in her career on the third attempt. What a fantastic match. The 380-day reign of Bayley is now over. What a brilliant matchup. What an absolutely brilliant matchup. That is two competitors right there that know that they just absolutely nailed it. But this isn't going to be the last time I have no doubts that Bailey and Sasha Banks will face off again. I know rematch clause don't exist in WWE at the moment. I know they're not meant to exist in WWE at the moment. But we will see Bailey versus Sasha Banks again for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I have no doubts about that. Now I mentioned... Why Why would WWE put the title on Sasha Banks right now? Of course, she is in season two of The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian is a big deal. It's on Disney+. Plus. It's in Star Wars. We know that uh, Sasha Banks has a big part in that. And uh, WWE wants someone who is going to be in the mainstream media, who is going to be in the press, and who is going to be getting a lot of media coverage. They want her to be a world champion at this time. And I think that is a factor as to why they rushed this ahead. I, I mentioned in the preview. That I did for this match, I felt like this match could be a WrestleMania main event material. 
I felt like this really could be WrestleMania main event material and um, they decided to do it here. And I think it was absolutely delivered and it was an absolutely fantastic match. So Sasha Banks is the new SmackDown Women's Champion. As we go backstage, Charlie Caruso is now talking to the Hurt Business. So who is going to be facing Retribution? I think that match is probably going to be next. Bobby Lash looks set to compete. But it was a classic. It was it was classic. I mean, there's not much, there's not more to say really about that Sasha Banks versus Bailey match. It was absolutely fantastic. It was it was brilliant. Those two, whenever they face off, it's genius. It, it is genius. It's absolutely brilliant. I think it is fantastic. So we're going to find out shortly who will be facing Retribution from the Hurt Business. So it looks like we're going to have Slapjack, what a fantastic name, facing off against Bobby Lashley as Retribution face off against the Hurt Business next at WWE Hell in a Cell. I wish they would have gone, we're going to have, uh, the person we're going to have face a member of Retribution is the newest member, Ricochet. That would have been awesome. Because I still think that Ricochet, Ricochet needs a mouthpiece. Ricochet needs a mouthpiece like an MVP. Because Ricochet's, I think his biggest issue is that his um, his promos suck. I mean, I'll be, I'll be pretty open about that. Like, I'm not, his, his, his promos suck, Ricochet. I don't know if you saw on social media this week, there was a lot of um, clips of Ricochet. He was obviously doing some uh, workout at the gym. He was doing a workout at the gym with uh, Stacey Irvin Jr., former NXT superstar. And basically their workout was sort of a gymnastic workout and they were doing front flips and back flips and Ricochet does, um, Ricochet goes to do like a front flip, doesn't land it a couple of times and uh, keeps trying, keeps trying and then after sort of two or three times he sort of sat cross-legged on one of these sort of platforms you see at the gym and um, basically from a, a sitting position cross-legged he manages to do, do a back flip and lands in a sort of a superhero position, or lands on his feet, essentially, which is incredible, incredible. And um, so he does all of that, and uh, which was incredible. And I saw a lot of people response to that as, oh, he can do all of this, but why isn't he doing this on Monday Night Raw? And why isn't he doing this? Why isn't he getting more time? And uh, the reason why is because he can't talk. He can't talk, and, and what is his character? I don't think anyone knows his character. As we just had an advert for that sort of 30 years of Undertaker deal, which is cool. Some of the documentaries on the WWE Network look amazing for the uh, for the 30 years of The Undertaker. We've also just got an advert for uh, NXT Halloween Havoc the coming this week on Wednesday. Should we do a watch-along for that? If you wanted us to do a watch-along for NXT Halloween Havoc this week, let me know in either the live chat or in the video or in the uh, comment section below if you're watching after the fact. If we get enough people that are interested, we'll do a live uh, watch along for NXT Halloween Havoc on Wednesday. I think that will be the. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's going to be an episode of NXT that beats AEW in the ratings. I would have thought it is, but we'll have to wait and see for that one. Just switch headphones there. My headphones are dying. Do you ever find that with your Apple AirPods that they just they don't hold battery that well? I mean, Apple, if you are watching, which you're probably not, you can always send me some free ones. So Bobby Lashley is coming out right now. So as Bobby Lashley is going to face Slapjack. We don't have a graphic. We don't have a graphic. If we'd have, if we'd have known, we'd have made one. But we don't have one, unfortunately. So we're going to get an added match of uh, a Hurt Business member versus a Retribution member before we have our main event for the WWE Championship inside Hell in the Cell, of course. What does everyone think of the show so far? Are you enjoying it? If you're enjoying Hell in the Cell... Smash a like on the like button. Of course, if, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, bottom right hand corner. I'm just double checking how many subscribers we currently have. We currently have 1,051 subscribers. So thank you to everyone that has newly subscribed to WrestleNews365. If you haven't already, 
You can join those new people that have subscribed by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. We'll see how many we can get up to before the uh, the night is over as we have Retribution about to make their entrance here. And it's just a normal it's a normal entrance. I thought they were going to end like enter like through the crowd or something like given that Retribution usually enter sort of in the cover of darkness or surround the ring, but they've just made a normal entrance. Slapjack has anyway. So here we go. This is Slapjack, which is uh, Shane Thorne from NXT. Why they can't use their NXT names, I don't know either. Very strange, isn't it? But we've got Slapjack who has the worst name. I mean, literally, he has the worst name <laughs> out of anyone. He really does have the worst name. But it's for the United States Championship. The United States Championship is on the line. I didn't hear that in the promo. I was too busy listening to myself talk. But the United States Championship is on the line as Slapjack takes on Bobby Lashley. Could you imagine... Could you imagine if the United States champion, the holder of the secondary championship on Monday Night Raw, is held by someone called Slapjack? I wouldn't put it past him. But uh, Bobby Lashley starting off this match hot. Considering, though, you think about it, if, if Slapjack loses this match, which I think he will, if he loses this match, then what are we, lo what are we looking at from Retribution? We're looking at they lost... Uh, to the Hurt Business Monday night on Raw. They've got locked in the uh, the full, the Hurt Lock, that's what they're calling it. Even though they called it the full Lashley for a while, which is awful. Which is awful. Um, ooh, a Slapjack is just thrown into the uh, the turnbuckle by Lashley. If they lose, to, if Slapjack loses tonight, that is two matches in a row. Their first two matches in WWE, or well, technically their third, I suppose, that they would have uh, lost in WWE. Bobby Lashley delayed vertical suplex. And just, I mean, just imagine. Imagine if Slapjack wins this. Imagine if Slapjack from Retribution is the United States champion. Why wouldn't you just take the mask off? There we go. Yeah, Bobby Lashley is grabbing at the mask. Good. You would expose it's Shane Thorne, then the commentators would have to go, oh, it's Shane Thorne. Oh. I never noticed that. Bobby Lashley's got him on his shoulder. What I will say though about Shane Thorne is um, he's a great bumper. That's a terrible drop kick. He went to drop kick Bobby Lashley and just missed him, which meant the commentator had to do their classic. He didn't get all of him. He didn't get all of him right there. Slapjack though is going for a rolling cannibal into the corner. Looks like he's under the bottom rope. He tried to cover up Lashley there, but Lashley was essentially all the way under the bottom ropes. <laughs> he had to break that one up. But yeah, this is uh, this is this is strange here. This this matchup because um, again, I think Lashley will win. But if Slapjack loses, that means they've had three matches. Retribution. One was a no contest, and they would have lost the other two. Oh, nice. Tornado DDT by Slapjack onto Bobby Lashley there. This is going to get two. Very nice, though. What does everyone think of that Slapjack mask? I mean, it's meant to be a play on a horror movie. I'm not a horror movie buff, so if you... Um, whatever that mask reminds you of, you can let me know in the live chat. It's meant to, it's meant to be a play off like the hockey mask, isn't it? What's, what's that? It's not Nightmare on Elm Street. It's the other one. It's Jason, whatever. Again, not a I don't like horror films. Bobby Lashley just throws Slapjack across the ring. Bobby Lashley's going to go with a belly to belly here. Just throws Slapjack Shane Thorne across the ring once again. Bobby Lashley looks like he's setting up for a clothesline here. Slapjack ducks though. Whoa, one arm slam by Bobby Lashley onto uh, Shane Thorne, Slapjack. I don't know what to call him. 
Here we go. Bobby Lashley's setting up for the uh, the Hurt Lock. Here we go. The Hurt Lock's locked in. There's that full Nelson. And Slapjack is out. But here comes Retribution. So Retribution have been involved in three matches. One was a no contest. The other two have been defeats. Because Retribution is doing so well in the win and loss column. But we've got Mace and T-Bar attacking Bobby Lashley right now. Mustafa Ali has just said lights out to them. Whatever that means. But Bobby Lashley is fighting off T-Bar and Mace. Here come the Hurt Business. Well, Mustafa Ali looks to be surrounded by the Hurt Business now. But he escapes. He escapes to Mia Yim, who is called Reckoning. Man, the Hurt Business are booked horrifically. Horrifically. Bobby Lashley just beat a member of Retribution in about two minutes. So again, three matches. Three matches that Retribution have had on the main roster. One was a tag match that ended in a no contest. The other was another tag match which they lost to the Hurt Business after Dominic Dajakovic, T-Bar, tapped out. The third was a singles match just then for the United States Championship between Slapjack and Bobby Lashley, and Bobby Lashley beat him in two minutes. So this group is being booked so well. So well, aren't they? I mean, that is sarcasm. That is British sarcasm, if you can tell. Because the book, the, the group is being booked horrifically. Horrifically. And Bobby Lashley is still the United States champion. Which would mean, if I am, if I do have done my maths correctly, that means we only have one more match left, which would be for the WWE Championship. Kevin says, damn WWE make Retribution so weak. Yes, they have. Now, it's interesting when it comes to Retribution as well, because from the start, I don't think anyone was, to be honest, no one was really ever on board. Let's be honest, no one's re really ever on board with this Retribution gimmick. They weren't. Because I think... You know, they never felt chaotic. They never felt like anarchy. They never felt like anything like that, really, did they? But I think people did want to see. People did want to see if they could progress into something. And if if you're going to do it, do it properly. And I think that's the frustrating thing with WWE is they've never, they just, they haven't tried. They've already given up. They've already given up. And I think the frustrating thing is once people saw the people that were involved with Retribution... With it being Dominic Dajakovic, whether it being Mia Yim, um, Dio Madden, Shane Thorne, all of those guys, now Mustafa Ali, everyone wants to see them succeed because we've seen their work in NXT and we've seen them that we that we like them and uh, they're being booked poorly. We've just seen uh, an advert there for Survivor Series, which is going to be 30 years of The Undertaker. So we know that The Undertaker is confirmed to be appearing at Survivor Series, given that it's 30 years of uh, The Undertaker. So The Undertaker confirmed will be appearing at Survivor Series next month. Are we going to be doing a watch long for that? We certainly are. So uh, be sure to subscribe to Wrestling News 365 because we will be doing a watch long for Survivor Series next month when it is 30 years of The Undertaker. You can watch it with us live here on the channel as we will be doing another watch along. As Hell in a Cell is being lowered, for the third match, which is for the WWE Championship, it's Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns. As we go, yep, they're just saying it right now. It's going to be 30 years of the Phenom, 30 years of The Undertaker at Survivor Series next month. Of course, it's interesting because I remember in um, 2015 was 25 years of The Undertaker. And to mark the 25th anniversary of The Undertaker, or the 25 years of The Undertaker, they had the Brothers of Destruction versus the Wyatt family, didn't they? They had The Undertaker and Kane teaming up to face Bray Wyatt. And uh, and it was uh, Luke Harper, Brody Lee, in a tag team match for that show. And five years later, we're going to have 30 years of The Undertaker. But I don't think The Undertaker is going to be wrestling, don't worry. That was um, something that was actually reported on social media about a week or so ago, that Survivor Series is going to be 30 years of The Undertaker. He isn't going to be wrestling. It's just going to be 30 years of Taker. What's interesting, though, is going to be what 
what gimmick is The Undertaker going to be in for that? He has pretty much said that when he returns to WWE programming now, he's going to be Big Evil, essentially. Again, he's going to be the biker American badass. He's going to be Mark Calloway. So do I think we're going to see The Undertaker with the hat and the eye rolling and all this kind of stuff? I don't think so. I think we're going to... Uh, I hope we're going to see the American Badass once again. But we'll have to wait and see. As we have a promo package right now for the WWE Championship main event between Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. Uh, Kevin says Mercedes Martinez is a lucky woman. Well, that's right. Mercedes Martinez was a part of Retribution. Uh, but she is back in NXT now, so we don't really know the story about that. We don't know if she asked to be out, if she did, smart. We don't know if she was dropped out, if she was, lucky. So uh, I think she's benefited there nicely. As we have next up, we are going to have Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre, the main event for the WWE Championship inside Hell in the Cell. Now there's quite a few things to consider here, aren't there? One is that I believe, I want to make sure this is right. I think it is. Is this the first time that Randy, this is the first time that Drew McIntyre has main evented a pay-per-view as WWE champion? I don't know if it is. I think it is. I think it is. I'm trying to recall off the top of my head. I think this is the first time Drew McIntyre has main evented a pay-per-view as WWE champion. Um, I think... The reason that this is the main event, I feel, is because we're going to see a WWE Championship change. I think, uh, I think, uh, I think this is going to be, I think this is going to be a, a title change here. I think Randy Orton is going to become the WWE Champion. I think also something to consider here that this might be the main event because the Miz earlier tonight became Mister Money in the Bank. The Miz now holds the Money in the Bank briefcase, which says to me, if the Miz is holding the Money in the Bank briefcase. What better time to cash in than after Hell in a Cell tonight? And two superstars would not be expecting it because at the start of the night, a SmackDown superstar would have been holding the briefcase. So there's a lot There's a lot to consider here. One, we could have a title change anyway because I think Randy Orton might win the title because he's rumored to be facing Edge for the WWE Championship next year at WrestleMania. Two, The Miz has won the Money in the Bank briefcase earlier tonight. He is a member of the Monday Night Monday Night Raw roster. What better time to cash in your Money in the Bank briefcase after two guys have just faced off inside Hell in a Cell? There's a lot there that is uh, makes sense, and there's a lot there that potentially could happen. So this is going to be a very interesting end to a pay per view that has been very very interesting. And of course, it's amazing for us over here in the UK because this is uh, as a Brit. This uh, pay for you looks like it's probably going to end around, I would probably say about quarter to two in the morning. And usually it would be like 4 a.m. So this is awesome. Andrew Pollard says, hi, everyone. I just wanted to say this is the first WWE pay for you I've ever watched live. And so far, I'm glad I bought it. Spectacular so far. Glad you that you've enjoyed it, Andrew. As we're watching a, a uh, an, ad, uh, an advert now. With Batista in Gears 5. So there you go. If there's any Gears 5 or Xbox fans, then there you go. As we see Drew McIntyre just about to make his entrance for the main event here. For the WWE Championship inside Hell in a Cell. It's Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton. The first main event for Drew McIntyre as WWE Champion. What does everyone think about this one? Who are your predictions for uh, who are your predictions for this WWE Championship match? Drew McIntyre's got some fire promo right now. Kevin says, "Can you see Sasha and Bailey wrestling in a Last Woman Standing match at Survivor Series?" It depends what the what the um, what the situation is with the the whole brand supremacy deal. I could see, I could absolutely see them having a match at Survivor Series. I could, but it depends if they do the SmackDown versus Raw versus NXT deal again. Last year, for the men's side of things, we had 
a WWE Championship match. Oh, Randy Orton, there he is. Randy Orton tried to sneak up on Drew McIntyre there. Drew McIntyre was making his entrance and Randy Orton was dressed up as a cameraman once again. He was dressed up, looks like a janitor or a cameraman. He did it in his feud with Edge. He did it to the Legends a couple of weeks ago. And Randy Orton dressed up once again as a cameraman. Interesting. Interesting Randy Orton trying to sneak up on Drew McIntyre. And both guys are brawling on the outside of Hell in a Cell right now. The match hasn't officially started yet. Are we going to get both guys climbing? That is a question. I'm trying to... You know, and this is how sort of like a, a sort of gritty wrestling fan you are. Is I'm just looking at the table there. Does that have padding on? To me, that looks like it's got a crash mat on. Which says to me, someone's coming off top of the Hell in a Cell. I think it, I think it is. That... It does. That, that table... I think it does. I think that announce table has a layer of foam, foam on about that thick. Which usually, when you have a layer of foam on about that thick, says to me that we might have someone come off the top. We might have a big table bump coming during this match. Or at least we're going to have a table bump. Whether that table bump's going to be off the top of Hal in the Cell, we'll have to wait and see. But to me, I think we're going to see something pretty big in this match. Because I don't know about you, I saw that, that layer of foam. I mean, I might be completely wrong. But every time Shane McMahon has done the big dive off of Hell in the Cell, which has been twice, um, it always had a layer of fo foam on the top of the table that was about that thick. And I think that's what we could see in this, uh, in this match. So McIntyre has just closed... The Hell in the Cell door, it's padlocked, so maybe we're not. But if anyone can break the cage door, we'll have to we'll have to see. Andrew Pollard says, I can actually see Randy Orton walking away with the championship. It's really his time to take back the title and have another great reign. I do think Randy Orton could leave here the WWE champion purely because um said we've heard the reports. We've heard the reports that the Randy Orton Edge feud when it continues once Edge returns is um is going to be for the WWE Championship, as they show the WWE graphic there. They showed a WWE Championship graphic there, which is obviously from SmackDown Live in about 2016. <laughs> that was such an old graphic. But here we go, Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre are fighting it out, and the main event is on. The match has officially started. Drew McIntyre's first main event as WWE Champion. Is this his first main event pay-per-view match since WrestleMania 36? Where he won the WWE Championship? Could be wrong there. Here we go. Randy Orton went for an RKO. And Drew McIntyre's clothesline Randy Orton over the top rope. This is, uh, this is going to be interesting for sure. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, bottom right hand corner. We are over 1,050 subscribers. Thank you to everyone that is newly subscribed tonight. As I mentioned, we're going to be doing a lot more watch longs over the coming weeks and months. They've just announced that Survivor Series next month is going to be 30 years of The Undertaker. We'll be doing a live watch long for that too. Thinking about doing a live watch long for NXT on Wednesday as well. Considering for doing one for the NXT Halloween Havoc. We're not going to do them for all... Raws and Smackdowns and NXTs and AWs and that because I think it's a bit redundant. But special shows, I think they're worth worth a watch along, right? But Drew McIntyre is all over Randy Orton to start this one. Pushing him up against Hal and the Sow without a doubt. What was that? He goes to, Drew McIntyre is obviously going to throw Randy Orton in the ring. And Randy Orton just sort of headbutts the ring apron thinking he was going to slam him into it. <laughs> Randy Orton keeps trying to escape Drew McIntyre. But McIntyre is chasing him all over the cell. Throwing Randy Orton into the, the walls of the Hell in the Cell. Throwing him into the ring apron. He's picking Randy Orton up now and he's going to throw him into... Looks to be in the Hell in the Cell once again. He's picking Randy Orton like, like he's a baby. And throwing him into Hell in the Cell. 
throwing him into the ring post right now too. And Drew McIntyre looks like he's enjoying every second of it, and I am too. It's been a, it's been a it's been a certainly an interesting pay per view, without a doubt. Um, big moments, absolutely big moments. As apparently hashtag H I A C trends number one in the United States once again. Certainly an interesting pay per view. We've seen title changes. Sasha Banks as new Raw, sorry SmackDown Women's Champion. Uh, we've seen Roman Reigns retain the Universal Championship. We've seen the Money in the Bank briefcase change hands. Keep an eye on that because I think there is potential something could happen in the main event right now when it comes to Miz and the Money in the Bank briefcase. There is um, there is a lot of interest, I think, in this match from uh, the Miz backstage. Regardless, I think that the Miz on Monday Night Raw having that briefcase is the right call. Absolutely the right call. I think it was the right call to get the briefcase off Otis because... Um, and they realised that he just he wasn't going to be Universal Champion, especially not on SmackDown, especially not with Roman Reigns, and that was uh, it was the right call. Drew McIntyre, bang, hits Randy Orton with the steel steps right there as well. This match has been all Drew McIntyre so far. If you've enjoyed Helen us out, click the uh, special like on the like button as well. So it really does help us out for these live streams here on YouTube. Drew McIntyre looks like he's setting something else up now, regardless of what that is. He's going to throw the steel steps. Randy Orton ducks, though. The sound managed to maintain its integrity. I remember, oh, was it was it the Mick Foley, Triple H, Hell in a Cell match at No Way Out in, uh, in 2000 when they threw the steel steps and it broke? Of course, it broke this out. So I thought they might be doing something like that. Because I still think... I think you saw that announce table. I'm telling you. There is a uh, there is a, a pad in there that's about that thick of foam. So I think potentially... I think we're getting a table bump. I really do. Oof. Randy Orton. Here we go. Hit Randy Orton with, steel, with a steel chair to the knee and then to the back. And now he's driving the chair into the... Uh, previously broken jaw of Drew McIntyre that previously broken jaw of Drew McIntyre by the way that was so broken that he was back on Raw in about a week and he was speaking quicker than I am right now so that jaw healed up very quickly but now suddenly it's injured again because you know pro wrestling because pro wrestling logic is just classic god I hate I hated those that part of the Randy Orton Drew McIntyre storyline as we were heading into Clash of Champions. It just it just it buried everything. And I hate to use that term. But you know, the punt kick had been built up, it'd been built up and built up. Then suddenly Drew McIntyre's impervious to punt kicks and take about a million of them. He then has a broken jaw, but that jaw was only broken for about a week because then he was back. He drove back well it sort of he came back two weeks later, then he came back two weeks later in an ambulance so he wasn't in the hospital for two weeks with a broken jaw. So what was he doing in that ambulance? Did he steal it? Does he rent out an ambulance? Does he drive around in an ambulance like a sort of weird version of a Ghostbuster, Drew Buster in his weird ambulance? I don't know. And then Randy Orton gets hit with three Claymores and has the same. It was just, oh, God, I hated that part of that storyline. But back onto the match. We have uh, Randy Orton sort of doing a bit of a hangman there on, uh, on Drew McIntyre on the bottom rope. And Randy wants sort of back into this match. He's regained control a little bit. Social media is all they're commenting on right now is that Randy Orton finally took off his pants that he was wearing. American pants, not English pants, obviously. It's, it's PG show. Can't even bleed, let alone do that. Randy Orton does a stomp to the head of Drew McIntyre onto the steel ring steps. And Drew looks to have that sort of faraway look in his eye right now. Drew McIntyre. As Randy Orton is gaining control. <laughs> and Randy Orton is smushing the face of Drew McIntyre up against the steel grating. And uh, Drew McIntyre is doing his best screaming impression. And Randy Orton looks to be enjoying it immensely. Immensely. 
it's always interesting though because I'm sure I think most people have most people um, have, have felt that kind of sort of steel sort of mesh grating and they also talk about you know your face getting rubbed across it and I'm sure getting your face rubbed across it is is a, a bit painful but personally if you felt it and it does have a bit of give to it if your face is up against it I don't know if that would it, would that be that painful I don't know if it would be I don't know if that would be that painful Either way, Randy Orton is uh, in control of this one. He's used the match to sort of tailor it to his pace at this point, which is the slow, methodical Randy Orton Viper pace. Randy Orton as well, I mentioned this on all the, the preview I did for this match, is the MVP for me for 2020. I did see, I saw on, I saw this on social media earlier. Someone was saying that, Oh, I can't believe people are saying that Randy Orton is the MVP of 2020 when you've got people like Oscar and Sasha Banks and Bailey. And my response to that is exactly what I said in the preview videos that I think Oscar and Sasha Banks and Bailey and all of those people have had fantastic years. I do. I think they've had fantastic chapters of 2020, though. I think Oscar, again, those empty performance center shows, the first few, no one could touch Oscar. She was fantastic. Bailey and Sasha Banks. They had a fantastic match tonight, classic. And but during the summer it was all about Bailey and Sasha Banks. But if you're looking at someone for the entirety, the entirety of 2020, who has been consistently just on another level, it's Randy Orton. It's Randy Orton. Nobody can touch him. For the entirety of this year, he has just been superb. He has been world class. Ever since he turned on edge, which was the night after the Royal Rumble in January. Can you, ta can you tell me anyone that consistently over that period of time has been better than Randy Orton? You can't. I, w I will not have it. I will not have it. Randy Orton's just done an Irish whip to Drew McIntyre who went into the steel ring uh, real steel ring steps, easy for me to say, propped up against the wall of Hell in a Cell. How do you feel about um, this being the third Hell in a Cell match of the evening? I feel like... I've enjoyed. I enjoyed the first two Hell in a Cell matches. I did. I th feel like three is too many, though, for for one Hell in a Cell pay per view. I must say, I think looking back on it, that first match between Roman Reigns and Jey Uso didn't need to be a Hell in a Cell match. That could have just been an I Quit match, and it would have been absolutely fine. I think it didn't need to be Hell in a Cell. And then I think if this was if this was the second Hell in a Cell match of the evening, I think it would feel a lot different. I feel like it's um, it makes it difficult for Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton because you've got to have not only three Hell in a Cell matches in one show, but they've all got to be different. They've all got to be completely different, and they and so far they have been, but it certainly makes it more difficult for for Randy and Drew, I must say. And I don't think the first match of the show needed to be that Hell in a Cell match. I think it could have just been an I Quit match, and it would have been fine. I'm not sure what what purpose the Hell in the Cell really served in that since it was an I Quit match. But Drew McIntyre looks to be fighting back here against Randy Orton. Right hands continuing to fight back. Randy Orton, of course, just set up a, uh, a table on the side of the uh, Hell in the Cell there. Randy Orton is going for the bang. Classic Randy Orton backbreaker there. Randy Orton, he's, he's so smooth as well. His transitions are just so smooth. Like his transition into that backbreaker was incredible. Randy Orton, I think Drew McIntyre kicked out at like one there. And Randy Orton is just <laughs> talking to the ref like one, not, not two. But uh, if you look at the, um, again, this uh, I don't know, going to sound like a broken record, but... If you look at that announce table there, the announce table got cleared earlier on in the show, or early on in this match rather, by Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre, and it looked like it had a, a, a some stuff on the table that thick to, which would imply a bump off the top through the table. That announce table has yet to be, um, they've not they've not put anything back on it. That announce table is still clear, so I'm still sticking with my prediction after seeing that announce table that someone's coming off the top of the cage. This is going to be uh, this is going to be something crazy. I think we're getting a big bump, which again would explain why it's the main event. There's a lot of reasons why this could be the main event. 
And if we have a, I'm already booking this in my head. So there's several reasons. So if this is going to be the main event, because we're having a bump off the top of the sale through the table, again, what perfect time to cash in if you're the Miz, when someone's just come off the top of the cage, which again is why this is the main event. So I'm going to go on top of my prediction. Okay. I I'd said that, um, I that I saw what was going to happen when it comes to Otis uh, being turned on by Tucker. I'm going to go with another another prediction. Someone's coming off the top of the cage, and then after someone comes off the top of the cage, it's the perfect opportunity for the Miz to cash in. That's what I'm going to go with. So Drew McIntyre is firing back up. Drew McIntyre looks like he might be setting up for a Claymore here. Those drone shots are awesome, aren't they? Those drone shots that they use are fantastic. Couldn't use them in a normal arena because of the health and safety guidelines, but they are fantastic. Now, Drew McIntyre had Randy Orton up on his shoulders. Orton's escaping out of the ring there now. Randy Orton smashing Drew McIntyre's face off the apron and into the Hal in a Cell wall. Here we go. Oh, Belly to belly suplex. Drew McIntyre hits a belly to belly suplex to Randy Orton through a, uh, a a table there that was set up on the Hell in the Cell wall. And you've got the piped in this is awesome chance. So <laughs> we're being told by the producers at home that this is awesome. Awesome belly to belly suplex there through the table propped up on the Hell in a Cell wall. I suppose the question is, if they are going to go through the announce table, if we are going to see a big bump off the top of the cage, they've got to get outside at some point. So how do they do that? Do they go through the wall? Do they somehow break through the door? Because that is three things that I kind of, tell well, two so far that I telegraphed this evening. I've floated in the match. Potentially we could have... Jimmy Uso being attacked by Roman Reigns to make Jey Uso I quit, which was the case, or Jey Uso quit. Great grammar there from me. And the second, as soon as uh, John Morrison dropped the briefcase at Tucker's feet, I felt like Tucker might use it against Otis, and that was the case. So the third is that someone's coming off the top of the cage and that the Miz is going to cash in. Music Sunil Jat, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, says, what is next for Seth Rollins? Well, it looks like Seth Rollins is going to be feuding with Murphy on SmackDown. It looks like that Murphy, Seth Rollins, uh, Mysterio storyline is still ongoing. It's got a layer Mysterio now involved in it, but Seth Rollins is still going to be involved in that on SmackDown. But of course, he wasn't booked for tonight's show. A lot of people weren't. Only sort of five or six matches for tonight's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. The Randy Orton is... Figuring out what to do next. The wheels are turning as to what he is going to do next in this match. He's going to go for more, more weapons. Let's just hope. Ah, uh, there we go. This is what is going to facilitate the big bump off the top of the cage. Because Randy Orton has got bolt cutters. Randy Orton has got bolt cutters and he is going to cut that that uh, chain off of the cage, which says to me, we are getting that announced table bump, my friends. And Randy Orton has cut the chain off of the door and the door is going to be opened to hell in a cell. The door is unlocked. The door is unlocked and this is going to mean we are going to get a bump. We are going to get a bump. Strike one up for another one because we're getting that bump. Affy James says, hashtag The Fiend is coming for Randy Orton. That is a very good shout. Um, I think The Fiend is potentially could be coming for Randy Orton. Of course, they have history. I floated it in one of the videos that uh, The Fiend has been doing a lot of storylines about people that have wronged him in the past, whether that was John Cena or, or Daniel Bryan. I think The Fiend could be, um, could be coming after Randy Orton next. You're absolutely right. 
But Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre are now brawling outside of the Hell in a Cell structure. So both men are going to be brawling all over the Thunderdome here. Oh, Randy Orton has just thrown Drew McIntyre into the uh, Hell in a Cell structure there. So both guys are brawling on the outside, which says to me we're going to get this big bump. As soon as I saw that table, as soon as I saw the padding on the announce table, I thought, here we go. And it hasn't been cleared up since. And Randy Orton looks to be assessing the situation here. All right, here we go. Randy Orton is staring at the top of the staring at the top of the structure. He's gonna climb. Here we go. Here we go. I told you this bump was coming. This bump is coming. Randy Orton is climbing. As I mentioned, this bump is coming off the top of the cage because it's coming from the top of the cage through the announce table. It's just a case of who. So that was part one. We've got to wait for this bump. But my prediction was, once I saw that table, that we're going to get a bump through the announce table. And this is also going to lead to the Miz cashing in. But I suppose I could see the other side of it if if it's Drew McIntyre going through the announce table, that is the ideal way to protect Drew McIntyre in terms of the loss of the WWE Championship to Randy Orton. What a visual that is. Randy Orton, they've they've shot this so well. Randy Orton is on top of Hal in the Cell. Drew McIntyre is standing on the ground staring up at him. They've got the camera right on the floor. They're staring up like that. They make Randy Orton look like an ant on the top of Hal in the Cell. This is fantastic. The drama here is awesome. And Drew McIntyre is going to chase him. Drew McIntyre is ascending. He is climbing up Hell in the South to meet Randy Orton. Here we go. Both guys are going to go on top. Here we go. This always makes me nervous when they get on top of the cage. Please don't hurt yourselves, guys. This is high-risk stuff. Drew McIntyre is climbing the structure, and he is meeting Randy Orton at the top of that 20-foot structure. That is 20 feet in the air. You've got to factor in both these guys are, you know, six foot three, six foot four. So this is 25 foot up. Here we go. Both guys are at the top. This is high pressure stuff. My God. This is <laughs> pretty serious stuff. Here we go. Randy Orton's got something. What is that? Is that a pipe? Randy Orton's got a lead pipe. He suckered Drew McIntyre in, and Drew McIntyre's at the top right now. They're shooting this with drones as well. This is incredible. Look at the production here. Absolutely amazing. Feels like a movie. There we go. He swings for it. And now they're both sort of brawling on top of a hell in a cell. This is this is terrifying. As I mentioned, this is um I think I, f I feel like we're getting we're going to get that big table bump off the top of the cell. We're going to get that big bump and Randy Orton just hit um Drew McIntyre once again with that steel pipe, that lead pipe. Every time uh, they're moving over to that side of the, the sow, which is near the side of the announce table, which again says to me, we're getting that bump. We're getting that bump through the announce table anytime soon. Here we go. I don't know if it will come straight off the top. We might get a case of someone climbing down halfway and then they drop from about 10 feet through the table. I think that's what we could see. Randy Orton is climbing down right now. Randy Orton's climbing down. So is uh, Drew McIntyre. 
Drew McIntyre is following Randy Orton as they're climbing down here. I think they're both going to go through the table from about 10 feet, it looks like. Randy Orton is throwing punches. Both guys are about 10 feet up now. They're coming down to the 10-foot line. Yeah, there is um, there is a place for both guys to put their feet. You can see it on the side of the cell. Here we go. Both guys are about 10 feet up, including their body height, about 15 foot up. Here we go. That announce table is cleared. One guy is going through. Randy Orton has just thrown Drew McIntyre off into the uh, into the support beam. Here we go. Something's going to happen. Like one of them's going to go through. I have a feeling that it might be, it might be McIntyre. McIntyre's fighting back. Randy Orton's hanging on now. That announce table is cleared. The padding is on there. Randy Orton, bang! And Drew McIntyre has gone through the announce table from about 15 feet in the air. He launched himself. It wasn't much of a hit off. He launched himself through. My, oh my. I'm sure we'll see a replay of this. But Randy Orton has just crashed Drew McIntyre through the announce table there. I think he looks okay. We've even got a piped in holy SH, you know the rest. YouTube will demonetize me if I say that. My oh my. Drew McIntyre looks to be favoring his collarbone. Let's hope he's not injured or anything like that. Randy Orton foul from, sorry, Drew McIntyre foul from about 15 feet, 10 feet in the air. You need to be rolled into the ring though, I think, to uh, to get a pinfall. Drew McIntyre is busted open from the mouth as well. He's bleeding from the mouth, it looks like. Drew McIntyre is still moving, though. Drew McIntyre, is, he said he's bleeding from the mouth. What he will say, though, this is going to sound so like it's easy for me to say sitting here in the comfort of my home watching this but um they are literally on the, the padding <laughs> which kind of gives away the gives away the magic a little bit there i think maybe that's just me but it looked like i mean we haven't seen a replay yet so we'll have to wait and see but there's potential that drew mcintyre actually went into the side of the announce table and did a bit of a Vincent Mann, a Saint, Saint Valentine's Day massacre. You remember that when he came off the cage and he sort of broke his tailbone by going onto the edge of the table. It was nasty. Randy Orton is trying to pick up Drew McIntyre here. I don't know how they're, they're going to try and get Drew McIntyre back into the ring, I guess, or back into the cell, but it's right on the other side. So how do you even do that? McIntyre's still moving though. He's crawling. Randy Orton's just kind of following him. Orton's well, he said he's following him. He's more more stalking him than anything. As Drew McIntyre is is crawling and crawling. I don't know why. If you're the champion, why would you crawl back into the cage? Because as soon as you get in, you're going to lose the title. Here we go. We're going to see the replay. We're going to see Drew McIntyre fall. I think I think he landed fine. We'll see it again. No, he landed it fine. He lands 10 feet. I mean, it's, in terms of the way that he landed it, he landed it, I think, as well as he could have, to be honest. He lands on the, uh, he lands on the mat, on the padding there. No, he landed it. He landed it good, I think. He might have. I think the blood might be from maybe he bit his lip or he might have bitten his tongue, but I think it looked okay. In terms of how those things can land, anyway. Like I said, Vincent Man, St. Valentine's Day Massacre, when he came off the top of the cage, he landed literally on the edge, broke his tailbone. It was brutal. They're back inside Hell in the Sow, though, now. Drew McIntyre's been rolled into the ring by Randy Orton. We could be moments away. From Randy Orton becoming WWE Champion here. Here we go. Randy Orton is setting up for the three most devastating letters 
in sports entertainment. Randy Orton looks like he's setting up for that RKO. So we got what we got the table bump. This was half of my prediction that I've made mid match. My the third one of the evening. My, my prediction was that we were going to get the table bump. My second prediction was that we were going to get uh, the Miz cash in because of the table bump. But it looks like Randy Orton is setting up for the RKO. Here we go. Drew McIntyre is willing himself to his feet. Randy Orton setting up for the RKO. Here we go. Oh, he's going for the backslide. It's the SummerSlam finish. Oh, and he kicks out at two. Randy Orton's going for it. Claymore. Claymore hit by Drew McIntyre, but Randy Orton's rolled out of the ring. This match is not over just yet. Here we go. Randy Orton. Bang. He gets the Claymore. Randy Orton rolls straight out of the ring. So the match isn't over yet. Is the door, is the cell door open? Because this could be the perfect time for The Miz to cash in. In that uh, Randy Orton is on the outside of the ring and Drew McIntyre is in the inside of the ring. I think the door is still open. As far as I'm away, he cut the, he cut the bolt. Uh, it looks like The Miz isn't going to cash in just yet because Randy Orton is on the outside of the ring and so is Drew McIntyre. Both guys uh, look to be brutalised here because Randy Orton is out on the outside of the ring. Drew McIntyre is doing his best to try and pick him up and roll him into the ring. Drew McIntyre is attempting to almost deadlift Randy Orton up at this point and roll him into the ring. Here we go, rolls McIntyre into the ring. Rolls Orton into the ring rather. Apologies, it is five to two. Here we go. Drew McIntyre is setting up for a Claymore. I reckon this is going to get counted into an RKO. Randy Orton is selling here. Continue to sell. Drew McIntyre looks like he is going to set up for the Claymore. Here we go. Randy Orton is getting to his feet slowly. Drew McIntyre is going to go for the Claymore. Here we go. McIntyre setting up for it. He ducks under though. Misses the Claymore. RKO by Randy Orton. This is going to be it. One, two, three. And we have a new WWE Champion. Randy Orton is a 14-time WWE Champion. Wins the WWE Championship after hitting Drew McIntyre with an RKO. Bang, there we go. For the 14th time, Randy Orton is the WWE Champion. Like many people predicted, Randy Orton is the WWE Champion. Why is he the WWE Champion? Because one, he has been the most consistent performer of 2020. He has been the MVP of WWE in 2020. And this also sets up the future program with Edge as he will face Edge possibly at the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. But this also means that The Fiend possibly could be facing Randy Orton soon for the WWE Championship. Drew McIntyre is rolling around here. Doesn't look like he's done just yet. The Hell in a Cell is being raised. Randy Orton is the new WWE Champion for the 14th time in his career. He is the WWE Champion, which to me says, again, that we're going to get Randy Orton versus Edge for the WWE Championship. That report that came out that's saying that Randy Orton could be facing Edge at WrestleMania or Royal Rumble to me seems true. As we see a replay of Drew McIntyre going through the announce table. And we see a replay of the finish. Drew McIntyre goes for the Claymore. Randy Orton goes for the RKO. And this was the way that Randy Orton became WWE Champion for the 14th time. A match that started slow, got there in the end, picked up. Felt like the table bump was going to happen. I think at this point we're not going to get the Miz cashing in. But I think the plan, the plan of having Randy Orton versus Edge is in motion. 
because Randy Orton is the WWE Champion for the 14th time in his career. Do I think this is the last Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre match? I don't think so. I don't think so. But I think there's options here. I think potentially we could have Randy Orton versus uh, Drew McIntyre once again. I don't think this is the last match. I think also we could have Randy Orton versus The Fiend for the WWE Championship coming soon. And also, of course, we're going to have Randy Orton versus Edge for the WWE Championship very soon as well. So the title reign is now over for Drew McIntyre as Randy Orton has become the WWE Championship for the 14th time. Because Edge is going to be coming soon. Edge is going to be returning soon, it looks like. Possibly, again, the plan is for Edge to return in 2021 in January time. But that report about uh, Randy Orton versus Edge for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania does look to be in motion. Because Randy Orton, of course, is the new WWE Champion. Wow. What a pay-per-view. What a pay-per-view. We've had new WWE Champion. Roman Reigns made his cousin say, I quit. We've got a new SmackDown Women's Champion in Sasha Banks. We've got a new Mr. Money in the Bank in The Miz. 